Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the reopening of the public session of the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, September 15th, 2015. I'd like to start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, as I said, welcome to the reopening of the public session. The board started this evening in executive session earlier where we discussed uh, strategies with respect, of the, with respect to collective bargain updates related to police, fire, and dispatch. And also we discussed strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with the town manager. Going to open the public session now as you always do with a public forum. Residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Do we have anyone to come up tonight? <coughs> Mrs. Birchman. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Very well, thank Happy you. Birthday. Um, I'm going to ask Paul Witcher and Ann Click to join me. And <coughs> I'll try to go slowly, but we, as you know, had a big party this weekend, and we have a lot of people to thank, so put your feet up and get comfortable, because it's going to be a while. So I just, for, for anyone who didn't come, and I think there might be four or five people in town that didn't come out this weekend or were out of town, we had an amazing, amazing celebration weekend. We got very lucky with the weather. Um, and so we had a lot of events. And I, I just, I hate lists because it's easy to leave somebody off, but I feel really strongly that we need to thank so many people that made this possible. Um, starting with Friday, the Board of Selectmen was um, game enough to go hiking in the woods and certify the town boundaries, which is an historic and um, not often observed obligation. So uh, we had actually a lot of fun, uh, thanks to Stacy Spies and her daughter Beth Singer, who found all of the boundary markers for us. And Beth is actually going to uh, turn it into a Girl Scout Silver Award project and put geocaches there so a lot more kids can have fun. Um, replicating what we did on Friday afternoon. After that, we had our big cake on the common ceremony and um, you know, huge, huge thanks to Len Holden, Eric Sonnet, Parks and Rec, Historic District Commission, CPC, Dave Del Torrio, Mike Santos Suasso, is that how you say his name? Um, who all somehow got the Claflin Fountain not only restored but turned on and it's absolutely beautiful. Every time I drive by there now, Yesterday was early release, and the entire common was filled with kids having picnics, throwing frisbees, the fountain was going off. It was absolutely, absolutely beautiful. So um, huge thanks also to Jeff Bucaccio Studios of Natick, who did just a meticulous job on the renovation and restoration. And um, we also, Ben, did the ribbon cutting of our new seal in the, our new plaque in the middle of the gazebo, which um, was done by Mike Whalen, and he hit a little something on the there for, for future generations to find. Um, we also, Eric Sonnet rededicated the plaque that belongs in the gazebo um, honoring er Ernie Fecto in his service. And then we had great music by Barbara Kessler and her daughter Elena Ant Antoniades. Um, so that was just a nice backdrop to the evening. Um, Saturday was the big splash with starting off with Poly Arts, and we really want to thank the Poly Arts Committee for being so flexible. As I think about it now, I don't know how. We managed to pull off two enormous outdoor events in the same town on the same day. And I think all thanks go to the police, fire, and DPW for managing to get everything ready and keep everything safe. So I wanted to thank Trish Koza, Ben Pam Litchfield, and the Poly Arts Committee for their uh, flexibility and for their partnership with that. And then um, Saturday night for my committee was really the highlight, uh, the light of the night celebration. And I think we. There are various counts. I'm going with the one I like the best, that we had about 10,000 people um, at the middle school and the high school. We, um, and just enough cannot be said about Megan McSkimming, who really pulled all of the details together. She's just a master event planner. Um, so Nancy Cavanaugh entertained thousands of little kids, big smiles on Sparkle Field with entertainment, games, inflatables, um, our scavenger hunt, our time capsule writing project. Uh, we had terrific 
Entertainment and Bands on two stages managed by Olivia Handerhan, Regina Gemma, and Allison Caffone. Um, Carl Adams did a great job as a DJ in the children's area. And in um, the main stage, we had MC's Jack Cody, who's a senior at the high school. And we also had Chuck Nolan of WZLX, so keeping the crowds entertained in between acts. Um, Steve Spector was our headline band on the main stage and just absolutely cre created the perfect tone for the evening. It was like all your best buddies around in the backyard. He, they were just fantastic. So his band is named um, Hot Acoustics. Uh, Jennifer Blake and Liz Pomeroy solicited over 200 volunteers and deployed them across um, the middle school and high school campus to keep everything running smoothly. And the DPW was on site managing trash. It was, it was just remarkable how well everything worked. Maureen Holmes did an amazing job soliciting the food trucks. Um, I'm hearing rave re reviews about cannolis and cupcakes and what else, Mediterranean, and I don't know, I didn't sample them all, but um, they smelled fantastic and people seemed to not even mind waiting for a little bit in the line to get, to get fed. Um, a big highlight and something that we will continue, we will we'll make some other open days for the community to come in and finish up, um, was our Dear Hopkinton project, and it was really great. People were writing all over their bodies messages to Hopkinton, so I saw families with fifth generation, fourth generation, third generation on different arms and legs, and um, just some amazing photography. And so we will create a, a lasting monument to the weekend uh, for that. Sterling Ruel and his high school photography students also helped us out with that, which was wonderful. Um, then, we had the Metro West Symphony Orchestra, their brass and uh, wind sections come and play beautifully on the lawn as the light was fading and they ended with the 1812 Overture, the fireworks went off and it was just really spectacular. People really had a wonderful time and singing and dancing and running around. We've seen some really cool aerial photography of how many people were there and little kids glow sticks over here and fireworks over here and so we'll try to get some pictures of that for the time capsule that we can, so we can remember uh, the celebration. So I'm going to let Paul Witcher speak to the parade in a minute, but before I do that, I just really wanted to thank some um, town hall and town department staff that really pulled together and made this possible. Chief Clark um, was absolutely fantastic to work with. He is the reason that we had fireworks. He just kept everything smooth and calm on site. Um, Chief Lee, Lieutenant Wallace, Sergeant Porter helped us work out all the parking and logistics details and everything really went incredibly smoothly. John Westerling and Mike Manser and their team really did a ton to beautify the town. Everything looked so nice. They were out there working so hard and putting up signs in the rain and trying to keep them dry and just we had, I think, three different series of no parking signs that they had to juggle, and they just really did a fantastic job. I think over the course of the whole weekend, we only had to tow one car, so that was pretty good. Um, again, Dave Del Torrio and, and Mike Santos-Wasso just provided incredible support behind the scenes. Ed Wortonen and the Board of Health was wonderful to work with as far as um, helping us with the food permits and creating a process to get all of these food trucks on site. The finance team was writing checks left and right and trying to meet everybody's uh, needs. Janet McKay, Michelle Broder, and Adina Wright. And then mostly the person who probably wants to block my number the most on his phone is Jamie Helen. He has just said yes to every single thing I asked for a year and a half, done it the next minute. I mean, he's just absolutely fantastic. And Maria Glenn, the same thing. So. I just wanted to thank all of them. Um, our, our, um, we had a tremendous amount of sponsorship we've had this year, over $60,000 raised in private, private donations. All of the sponsors are listed on our website, and I encourage people to go and see that. Um, the Friends Committee has been selling merchandise, and I'll let Ann tell you more about some of their plans. But in particular, I think we've said this before, but they've <coughs> raised over $12,000 just in cans and bottles, and they on top of helping with the fireworks and manning the parade, creating the parade the next day, they also picked up all the cans and bottles all weekend. And so I think that number is going to go up dramatically this week. Um, and then finally, I have really exciting news that I can share, right? That the check is in the mail for the uh, state matching grant that Carolyn Dykema and Karen Spilka um, advocated so strongly for. So I think it's the first installment of $25,000 is it's the entire installment. $50,000 is coming our way from the state of Massachusetts. So 
all good news, all great things. I just really want to thank the whole community for coming out to celebrate. It's exactly what we wanted. We just wanted everybody to stop and take a minute and just celebrate and express how much we love living in this town, and I think that that's what happened. So it was a great community feeling. We have several more events coming um, for the rest of the year. The two that I want to remind people about right now, three, are please stop by the library and write in the Hopkinton memory book. Um, that will go into our time capsule. Kids who are writing letters to their future self still have some time to do that. The mailbox is downstairs in the lobby of the town hall, and they can mail themselves a letter, and those will go in the time capsule. And then, again, we'll find um, a couple more times where people can come in and uh, participate in the Dear Hopkinton project. We'd love to get as many residents as we can to, uh, to come and leave a message for posterity. So with all of that said, thank you all for your participation and your support. It was really, really great. I will never be doing it again, but I'm happy to give my notes <laughs> to anybody that would like to, to take it over. I suggest that they work with Paul Witcher and Ann Click, because that worked out really well. But uh, I'm going to let Paul thank everybody related to the parade. So thank you. Good evening. I first wanted to thank the people <coughs> on the parade committee because they've been working for two years to make this parade happen. And Click, who's here, was on the committee. John Gardner, Russell Grieve, Pat Lynch, and Rick Zafaro. They put in a lot of time and effort to uh, make this parade happen. The other thing I did want to mention is a lot of people didn't know who won the three awards for the floats. And the best float was Center for the Arts, ESL. Uh, the best history thing float was the Women's Club, and the most creative was St. John's Church. So they all received plaques. They were announced at the, by Jack Lud at the uh, reviewing stand, but not everybody could hear that, so I wanted everybody to know that. Next, I wanted to just mention that all those people you saw wearing orange shirts all three days, those people, they did it for an orange shirt. I mean, that's basically <laughs> what they got. And they did so much work that uh, it's really, really appreciated by all of us because we're here accepting credit on their behalf. And Jean's mentioned all the people. I could go through the same list, police, fire, and everybody, and Jamie, and uh, I just, want Ann to come up now because she was on two committees, the president of the Friends as well as being on the parade committee. I also want another committee which I want to remind everybody we're not through yet. We have a lumberjack show coming on October 18th and it's the first lumberjack show in Hopkinton and I hope not the last. So it's going to be on uh, from noon to dusk I believe and it's going to be at the high school in the uh, fields 12 and 13, and there is seating. There is going to be out uh, from out of town participants showing people how to do what they are going to be able to do. And there's going to be men's, women's, children's participation available. So it really is going to be an opportunity for the whole family to throw an atch a hatchet, sort of. But uh, we hope folks can come. We're going to. <laughs> We're going to uh, start advertising that, and um, I also want to remind the community that our merchandise is still available, and we will be uh, finishing up the bottle drive in October. The second week of October will be the last bottle drive at the depot. After that, if any community group would like to take it over, we would love to hear from them because, as you can see, it's been very profitable for any group that is interested who would like to make the commitment. And um, I, I think that it would be a, an awesome thing if it could continue. Uh, we are at the depot until sometime in November, right before the end of every, uh, all the ceremonies. We will be there uh, Saturday and Sunday, 10 to 2, from now until the end of November. So, uh, and we also are online if anybody wants to buy merchandise online. And I want to thank the community because as just before the fireworks and just before dusk, when I looked around and I saw all the families spreading their blankets and just settling in for a special evening, it just warmed the cockles of my heart. And I thank the whole community for giving me an, a night that I will never forget. Thanks. Thank you. 
So usually we don't usually we don't say anything. We don't respond to public forum comments. But I'm going to break. We'll break the rule in this case. It was a fabulous weekend. Everybody had a grand old time. Um, but thank you so much for doing. We actually do. The reason we're not doing more now is because I think we do all want to have you all in. Maybe even next week if we can get on the agenda to, to do something more formal about this. But since you're here now, thank you, thank you, thank you. The community's had a grand old time, and like you said, it's not over yet. As a key thing, people need to remember. So thanks again. We'll have you back. Okay. Thanks. I'll also give a shameless plug for the Hopkins Independent this weekend, this week, which has fantastic pictures. They actually managed to get them in full color spread for anybody who missed something. And um, so check it out in your mailbox and uh, uh, see if, see if uh, you see anything you recognize from the weekend. Okay, moving right along, we're going to pick up with the consent agenda. It's a long one tonight. A uh, number of action items. First of all is minutes. The board will be accepting the, fall, the public session minutes of August 31st, 2015. The second is a bands renewal. The board will consider approving a bond authorization note renewal for $300,000 for the integrated financial management system. Third is appointments. It's an action item. The board will consider the following board and committee appointments. Austin Spang is at-large member to the Historical Commission to complete a three-year term to expire June 30, 2016. Jerry Tewitt as an associate member to the Board of Appeals to complete a five-year term to expire June 30, 2020. Mark Hyman is a member of the Board of Appeals to complete a five-year term to expire on June 30, 2018. Fourth, Cameron Woods conservation restriction, also an action on the board will consider approving a conservation restriction for Cameron Woods. Five <laughs> gifts, the board will consider approving the following gifts. $5,830 in gifts from Jamie Oil, Unibank, Yogurt Beach, Price Chopper, and Karen and Jeff Bograd in funds, and an in-kind contribution of 60 cases of water from Price Chopper for the purposes of the 300th anniversary celebration. Thank you very much for all that. And a $30 donation to the Veterans Celebration Committee in memory of Ray Draw from Louise and Tom Sousa. Thank you again for that. Six is a parade permit. The board will consider approving the following parade permit. The Muscular Dystrophy Boot Drive fundraiser for Hopman Firefighters, starting at the intersection of West Main, Cedar Street, and Grove Street, ending at the same location on Saturday, September 19, 2015. That's this weekend. Rain date is Sunday, September 20, 2015. No street closings. Seven is a resignation. The board will accept the resignation of Rory Warren as a member of the Board of Appeals effective August 31st, 2015. Eight is town council appointments. Action item. The board will consider reappointing Miara's in Harrington as town council and Merrick O'Connell as special labor council. Nine is Pratt Farm closing commemoration. The board will commemorate the closing of the town's purchase of the Pratt Farm estate as approved at the 2015 town meeting and town election. Uh, chair's going to break out number nine separately. Uh, would anyone else like anything else broken up? Items three and seven, please. Items three, seven. So three, seven, and nine coming up. Mr. Coutinho, I'm fine. Okay. So chair will uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of items three, which is appointments, seven, which is the resignation, and nine, which is the Pratt Farm closing commemoration. So moved. Sorry. Motion second for discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Present not voting. That's unanimous. Okay. Um, Mr. Um, uh, Sistari, items three and seven. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, uh, item three, we have a couple of appointments to the Board of Appeals. Item seven, there's a resignation. Do we have room on the Board of Appeals before the resignation is official? <coughs> well, there we go. Okay, so I suggest that we take item seven prior to uh, item three first. Uh, so I would um, I would move uh, uh, that the board vote to approve item seven. Okay, so motions to really loud here. Accept the resignation of Rory Warren from the Board of Appeals. Okay, so we have a motion. Second. We have a second for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Present not voting. That's unanimous. Um, now on item three, we have uh, a couple of appointments to the Board of Appeals. Um, since there wasn't any room, this is a situation where we need to post uh, an open position on the Board of Appeals before we go ahead and appoint positions on the Board of Appeals. I believe so. Okay. So I would suggest that uh, we take no action on items uh, sub items two and three on the appointments. Would, so these, okay, so these weren't posted? I thought they were. Excuse me. Just a second. Go ahead. Mr. Kamala, go ahead. 
we have a standing posting of vacancies on the town website. Okay, but my understanding was that there wasn't a uh, vacancy until the resignation of Rory Warren was accepted. I don't think it has to be believe, accepted to be official. Yeah, I believe from my notes, there has been a single vacancy for a while. Oh, okay, I just asked. Yes, yes. Okay. But I thought we were referring to the one that's created by the resignation of Rory. Oh, no, no, no. I was just concerned with making appointments and accepting a resignation all in one place. Can you come to, can you come to there if you want to talk? Yeah. Is, is, um, Chairman, I, I've been before the Board of Appeals recently. I just I know that there is an opening in the associate uh, office, and there has been for some time. Um, so I, I think that, that um, the appointment of an associate member um, would, be, would be appropriate uh, because there is a current vacancy. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. So I'm a little, I'm a little lost here. So we had a full member who resigned. And we had an associate membership that was open. So we're appointing an associate member, which sounds like it's fine because that's been posted for a long time, right? That's the Jerry to it. The, the full member proposal, was that posted appropriately? Or is this person a, was this person an associate who's moving up to a full membership now? In, yes, in fact, based on past practice, when there's a vacancy, on the full member side, the tendency is to then move the associate to fill that position. And that's what we're uh, proposing. Okay, so we, the board can discuss that, whether we're good with that. But, yeah. but was, the, was that opening properly posted? Do we, are we comfortable that it was the, the, the full membership needs to be posted irregardless, right, of how we fill it from practice, doesn't it? Yes. I have to research what we've done in the past, but I, I think the general trend is right. to move the associate to the full member position if there's a vacancy. Whether that's posted for 10 days or not, I have to research that. Don't all, don't all positions have to be posted for? During my tenure here, yeah. we have posted. So it sounds to me like what we have is an unambiguous opportunity to appoint an associate member and a great deal of ambiguity around our ability to appoint a full member. <laughs> did, did we, are you, did you? To, to me, it sounds yeah. To me, it sounds as though we need to post for the full position. Okay. And as you said, yeah. you know, we can we can appoint another associate member, yeah. and that'll be. It sounds like two associate members, but there is one current mm -hmm. that's open. Did you have a comment? Yeah, well, uh, um, the, the way that it had been done previously was that associate usually moved up because it is, it's being a judicial branch of our town. It, um, it generally takes uh, somebody that has some experience that's been dealing with the board previously. But I don't know if that obviates the requirement to post a, post a position for a, for a certain amount of time. Like, I think, I think it's just... A, you know, a, a charter or a bylaw. I'm not sure what the, what it is that requires you to post a position. Irregard. I mean, I don't think there's any exception for the Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. At least I'm not aware of an exception. Am I, Mr. Kamali? Got do you have further light to shed on this? I, again, I think it's something we need to research. Okay. I, I have seen other ZBA charges where the charter clearly states that <coughs> an associate member automatically translates to fill a vacancy that is created by okay. the designation of a I don't know if that's the case. So maybe in the interest of moving on, I think the chair is going to, I'm going to, pending f some, someone look at the charter, maybe Jamie wants to do this quickly, I'm going to rule item number three of the appointments out of order because I don't, I don't know that we agree that the, that the position was posted properly. And so the chair will entertain a motion to appoint Austin Spang as an at-large member of the historic commission to complete a three-year term to expire June 3, 2016, and Jerry Tewitt as an associate member of the Board of Appeals to complete a five-year term to expire on June 30, 2020. If during the course of this meeting, Mr. Kamala, we, could, we have a different read on this, then we can come back to this item number three, but I think at the moment I'm going to rule that out of order. Uh, Mr. Chairman, so moved. I would like an opportunity to comment before we vote them. Okay. Second. Okay, motion, second, for discussion. Mr. Sistari. Uh, we've been getting into a habit over the last year and a half, two years, where when these appointments were coming up, 
Uh, we saw the applications uh, and the people's qualifications, and I know so we don't have that on this on this agenda, and I'd like for us to return to that. Okay. Do you want to? I mean, none of these are urgent. I mean, I, the Board of Appeals is sort of urgent, but we're not going to. I mean, do you want to um, hold off on this? I mean, pull the whole uh, thing aside. I, I, I don't have any to uh, hold off on this, but I'd just like to see us get back to that. Okay. Uh, are you good with this also? I'm good. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second, we have further discussion. Do we have any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of uh, approving uh, the appointments items number one and two, uh, say aye. I oppose. President not voting. That's unanimous. So those two appointments are made. The third will um, continue to evaluate. Okay, so we did item number seven. We accepted. We accepted number three. Now on to number nine, the Pratt Farm. Um, uh, so this is a special event. Uh, the town has is closing the purchase of the Pratt Farm, which was uh, a major discussion item on uh, the Springs uh, town meeting warrant and also at the election. Um, this has been purchased uh, both for open space for the town. Also, recall everyone that this has been the one that's been done in collaboration with the town scouting, both boy and girl scouts. So it offers an opportunity for them to put a structure there that will serve the town for years to come. Um, and there's some other purposes as well. I think we invited representatives of the Pratts in tonight um, to commemorate this. And Marianne, would you like to come on forth or please? Can I a few words? I'd love it. And could you introduce yourself just so everyone knows who you are? Certainly. Yeah. I'm Marianne Billadou, I'm Mary and Joe Pratt's daughter. And I just came from visiting my mom, and she really would have loved to be here tonight, but she's been slowing down over the past couple of years, so it's difficult for her to get around. However, though she's not here, she did want me to say a few words, and she wanted to make sure that you were all aware that she was very pleased, and this sale has her seal of approval, which at the end of the day was very important to me. Um, my dad also would have been very happy with this outcome. Um, both my parents have always loved this community. And um, just a little bit of history on the property, that the property had been owned by the family since the late 1800s. And when my grandfather first came here from Lithuania, um, he came looking for property, and they took him around in a wagon. And when they came upon what you all know of as the Pratt Farm, he fell in love with the pond, the brook, and the other amenities of the property. And he decided that's where he wanted to raise his family. So he and my grandmother raised eight children. My mom and dad raised the six of us, and we all had a pretty big backyard to play in. So now this big backyard will be um, enjoyed by the scouts and the residents here of Hockington. And just on behalf of my family, I want to wish everybody the best. And I hope that you all enjoy, love, and respect the property as much as my family has for the last several generations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Yes. Thank you. Mary, can you say hi to your mom for us? I most certainly will. Right. I'll give her a miss, call when I leave. Uh, Thank yeah, you very much. Sure. That'll mean a lot to her. Yeah. Definitely. Thank, Thank you. you. Good. No, are there any votes we need to take on this? We've already done the PNS. Yes. Okay. Uh, the board has to vote on the notice of non exercise of the right of first refusal. Uh, and this simply is a confirmation of the board's approval of the purchase and sale agreement. Okay. So the chair will entertain a motion to. Say it again, Ms. Kamala, vote to, uh, vote to exercise our right of first refusal. This is under Chapter 61A. Vote not to exercise. Not to exercise our right of first refusal. Okay. So the vote is not to exercise our right, the town's right of first refusal under Chapter 61A. Yes. Okay. So moved. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? President not voting. That's unanimous. Anything else we need to do, Mr. Kamala, to do this? All right. The deal is done. Very exciting. So um, looking forward to getting the scouts out there in the property sometime soon, starting a master planning process for this, and starting to turn this into a, the terrific town asset I think it's going to become. That's wonderful. It feels like it should be a little more momentous than, than it is. So we'll look forward to a cookout. Next time on the agenda is a common victual license. The board will consider approving the following common victualers license for Starbucks at 85 West Main Street. We do have some comments from the permitting team. Do we have a representative of the proponent here? Sir, welcome. Good evening. 
My name is Dan Brennan. I handle permits and licenses for Starbucks. Okay. Um, our planned opening date is October 9th, which is a Friday. Um, we were delayed for a while. We had issues with getting power to the site, um, so that kind of held us up. Um, our manager wasn't able to make it tonight, but her name's Courtney Henderson. She's a shift manager over in Worcester. Um, the store is looking good. I drove by it on the way here. Um, 30 seats inside, 16 outside. Uh, I noticed a comment from the health department saying that they didn't receive our food license and uh, application. We did submit that uh, about uh, two weeks ago. Um, and he can't close it out, obviously, until he does his final inspection. So I was told that uh, we proceed with the meeting here and uh, the common victual license won't be issued until we got our certificate of occupancy and everybody signed off. Um, that's pretty much the gist. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Mrs. Sestari. Mr. King. Yeah, I, I just have one because I, I, sure. I don't <clears throat> remember it being at the um, planning board meeting with the that the 16 exterior seasonal seating I just remember them talking about the 30 interior seats is that is that been approved by the planning as board? far as I know it has been I, the landlord kind of took the ball on the uh, approvals with the planning board and all that so uh, as, as far as I know no one's ever said otherwise to me through the whole process because I thought that they that it was the way I understood it it was there were 30 seats, and then there there could be there could be 16 um, outside, but there were an additional 16. It was just a seating for 30. I'd just like some clarification on that, if I if I may. I don't know if that means holding this up or not, but it was shown on all the construction drawings we submitted. I'm not okay. sure. No, it came out. You good? I mean, it's a okay. Fine. That, that's fine. I just okay. okay. It's. Okay. Uh, good. Any other comments? Okay. Motion. Please. Move the board select and approve the common victuals license for the, uh, for the Starbucks 85 West Main Street, pending issuance of the food service permit from the Board of Health and final inspections from the Fire Department and Building Inspector. Move motion. Second. We have a second for the discussion. Uh, yes, sir. I, I guess I would just comment on uh, Mr. Katina's concern. Um, suggest that we can continue to look into that, but that would be something that would be mm -hmm. eventually upheld and, uh, uh, by another group. Yeah, this would be the building inspector, yeah. you know, sort of decision. I mean, I'll look into it right away. I'll check with the landlord, see if we have a planning board approval. I'm all for it, so I hope you get it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah just <laughs> don't take it, do whatever you do, don't take it out. So, all right, so you're good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a motion, we have a second, we have had further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, present not voting, that's unanimous. So thank Thanks you, looking forward much. to seeing you open. Thanks. Okay, 710, a big one tonight here. Staff recognition. The board will recognize Officer Pat O'Brien for his retirement and 32 years of service to the Hopkinton Police Department. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, please. I have, a little, I have a little start I want to do here. Oh, Chief Lee, I'm gonna, I'll let you come up. We have some recognition points for uh, officers, soon to be Mr. O'Brien. So, go ahead, Chief, if you want to take it. Okay. Uh, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I had an opportunity this weekend to work with uh, Pat at the 300th, especially uh, after I led the parade. I went to his post and I. Uh, you know, watch the rest of the parade with them, which was an awesome parade. And the fireworks, by the way, are outstanding. And I think our officers are even going to uh, not accept uh, pay because they were so good. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, as I'm standing there with, <laughs> as I'm standing there with Pat, you just wouldn't understand the amount of people that come up and talk to him and, uh, you know, just constant praise of his efforts for all those years and the good work that he's done and how they're going to miss him. And it got to the point where it was a little aggravating because uh, I'm standing there and no one's even acknowledging me. I'm like, I'm Swiss cheese over here. <laughs> but obviously Pat has had a huge impact on this community because that's what he's done his whole career. He's engaged people. He problem solved. He helped people. And uh, one of the biggest things that I noticed and I've learned from other people 
It's his empathy and understanding of people and their problems. And you couldn't ask for better traits for a police officer. And, uh, you know, some people think these community policing things are a, a new concept, but not with someone like Pat. He's been doing it his whole career, 32 years without a blemish and, uh, on, on his career. And, uh, and the people that I talked to in the past and his former chiefs, they can't say enough about him. As far as the department, he's been looked up to as a leader, a mentor, and uh, he's always been that voice of reason with the younger folks. And... Uh, it kind of brought calm to the station. So uh, someone like Pat cannot be replaced. We will certainly miss him. And uh, good luck in your retirement. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Here's a chance. Come on up. Well, thank you, Chief. <laughs> yeah, first thing, I, like I told everyone, i just very fortunate to land in Hopkinton. Uh, for 32 years, uh, I couldn't ask for a better town to be in or a better department uh, to work for. Um, the guys and the, the ladies uh, to my right here that I've worked with for many years and all the ones in the past, just incredible. Uh, the town, um, I couldn't ask for better people. Very understanding of the police department, and I think we created a great bond between the two that made our job you know, a lot easier. And I, I just wish going forward that my fellow workers and those that are coming after me can just have as much um, pleasure working for the department as I did. It's, it's, it was fantastic. So I thank the board, and I thank the boards before you, and I thank the chiefs before, Chief Lee, and all my fellow workers throughout the years for um, just a, a fabulous you know, opportunity to have a career here. So thank you. Mr. Catino, have anything to say? Yeah, you've just always been an exemplary example of a beat cop. I mean, <laughs> you know, just you know, walk around, you knew everybody, and, 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 and it's what policing's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be enforcing laws, but to do, be at the right place and do the right thing so that laws don't get broken. And it's just been a pleasure having you, having you on the force and seeing you all, all around town and everything else. And just thank you very much for everything you've done. It's, uh, it's been great. I'm just, I was great to, glad to see you in a uniform the other day. And, and I told you when, uh, when somebody came up to you and said congratulations, I'd know whether it was for, uh, for retiring or getting back into uniform <laughs> again, because it was great to see you back in uniform. And we hope Thank to you. see you again. Appreciate it. Around town. Thank you. Mr. Sestari. Yeah, I think that this, uh, you know, what, what everybody else has said certainly rings true. You know, you're, you're an approachable person. And that's important. Uh, you know, I, I see the role of uh, law enforcement in any community being similar to that of a parent, right? Um, you know, people need to be intimidated when they do something wrong, but you need to be approachable when, when nothing's being done oh, wrong. Thanks, I'm good. Uh, you know, you're, you're exemplary of that. Uh, and I think that it's a compliment to both you and to the force in general and, and your, your current boss and the bosses before him. And, as well as your coworkers, uh, you know, it's something that's ingrained in the system, and but they need to start with, you know, the, the right materials to begin with. You know, you being the material, and, and uh, you know, you came through it with a with a great attitude all the time, and uh, you're uh, an absolute asset to the community, and uh, and you'll be missed. And as the chief said, you can't be replaced. But we'll try. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. Good. And I and I got a couple little points here. We actually got some bullets to put together to mention about you. So um, in summary, so you held the positions both all of patrol and detective and sergeant, so all, all three of them. You uh, actually at some point could have gone back to work in Milford, which is where your hometown is, but you decided to stay in Hopkinton, and you kept your whole family here, it sounds like, too. <coughs> so that's fabulous. Um, I think I should also point out that we've also seen you in other places, mostly on the basketball court, right? So you've been a town and, and varsity coach for years. And this is my favorite part of the whole thing. Apparently, at your retirement party, Tim Brennan had a, had a great line that I just have to repeat tonight, which was, Pat was always able to find the good in nearly everybody, even those he had to arrest. So <laughs> I think that's, that says something. Uh, so you've been a fixture. You'll be missed. You're the, you're the exemplar of the kind of officer we like to have in this town. And, uh, and thank you so much for all your service, and we look forward to seeing you for years to come. I so, appreciate it. All right. And we have a little gift for you, too, from the chief. All right. Yeah, Scott, take it away. All right. And we left the
price tag on it too. So here, oh, let's okay. put that to good use out there on the uh, on the golf yeah. course. Yeah. Probably get a little more use than a, a gold watch, so I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. So, it's been great. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Appreciate that. Thanks, Pat. Thanks. Good luck. Appreciate it. John, thank you very much. Can we get a um, picture, Pat? Okay, so uh, next time on the agenda, staff appointments. Uh, we're actually taking that off the agenda this evening, so we're going to move. We have two minutes left. Uh, what can we do in two minutes, Mr. Kamala? Four minutes. No, because that has Jerry and it's posted. Well, it doesn't. Actually, we can start it now if we had Jerry. Do we have Jerry handy? Oh, Jerry, I didn't see you over there. You want, you want to do this now? Do we have all the candidates? Somebody's bringing it right down to the wire. Come on, make yourself at home. You can stay there all night if you want. Plenty of seats at the table. All right, so I'll get the administrative part underway. Yes, sir. Well, I have all three here? Okay. So let's see. So chair is going to recess the Board of Selectmen meeting and uh, call to order the Appropriation Committee Appointing Committee, um, which consists of the Board of Selectmen, the town moderator, who is not here tonight, and the town clerk. Uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, select the chair of the Appropriation Appointing Committee. So chair, I'll, I'll, chairman of the Board of Selectmen will entertain a motion to, have to select a chair for the Appropriation Appointing Committee. See no volunteers. <laughs> we need a we need a nomination. Oh, need a nomination. you, me. Okay, yeah, fine. I move you. Second. Me, me. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. President Friday. Okay. So I'll take up the role of the chairman of the appointing of appropriation appointing committee. Goodness gracious, because that'd be hard to say. Okay. So the uh, the appropriation committee appointing committee is now in session. Add, and the uh, committee, which I refuse to say again, will now consider uh, some new applicants for an appointment. And this is to fill a, this is to fill a vacancy to complete a three-year term to expire June 30, 2016, uh, which is due to the election of a prior member to the planning board. And appropriation committee members are not allowed to hold any other positions in town government. So, and the new applicants we have tonight are uh, Jessica Shea, well, actually, Hanan Cohen, Suzanne Inman, and Jessica Shea. So I'd like to invite them all forward. I think we'll start with, uh, I guess, Jessica Shea, because she's first in my application package. So uh, Ms. Shea, are you here? Hi, welcome. Come on up. What I'd love you to do, could you just introduce yourself and uh, talk for a second about what you do and why you'd like to be in the uh, Appropriation Committee? Sure. 
So I'm Jessica Shea, as you said, although I'm Jessica King now. I just got married a couple weeks ago. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, Way to start it off, a volunteer for town government. Okay. Yes, well, we just moved to town in July. <laughs> um, so I'm very excited to volunteer to be in the town government. Okay. I've kind of been hoping to be able to do this up until we managed to get a house. Um, and happily, it's in Hockington, which I'm very excited about. I grew up in Upton, so okay. not very far away. Um, so I'm a field application scientist. I work for a pharmaceutical a biotech company. Um, I'm interested in being in the town government, as I said, doing um, some volunteering and helping out. Um, at my job, I'm a lab manager um, alongside being a scientist, and I also do some project management. So I have some experience, but obviously not in government, as I just bought a house about a month ago, so I haven't really been able to volunteer before. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's Good. who I am. Okay, well, well, great. Well, thank you very much for putting your name in. I'm, we need more people like you, to be honest, to come forward. So I, we're, we are going to find a role for you in town government, I promise you yes. that. Um, uh, the way we handle it tonight is we have everybody come up and introduce. Just, I, and I should have done this before I brought you up, but I'll just explain. The way we do it is we invite everybody up, introduce themselves, say a, say a few words. The appointing committee here will, uh, everyone can just ask a few questions, sort of uh, inquire as to your, your thoughts and why you want to do this, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, after we have all the appointees, uh, the, the candidates um, uh, discuss, what we will do is um, uh, chair will entertain a motion to appoint someone to the slot. We, assuming we get, an, we get a nomination, then we'll have a second, then we'll have discussion about it, and then we will uh, choose to, to select somebody. Immediately after that, we will then beg the people who didn't take the slot to fill any of the other multiple options we have in town government. So, as I said, nobody get, nobody goes home tonight without a job. Well, maybe they go home without a job tonight, but they don't, they don't. They certainly get a lead quickly on something else to do in town government. So, I guess I want to say that a thank you for coming. B that's how the process works. And C, like I said, we have three people here. We have many option opportunities for people to, to volunteer, and so we will take advantage of all of you in some fashion, hopefully. With that, let me pass this on over to the town clerk, and then we let to the town clerk to ask questions. Good to see you. Hi. Thank you for coming forward and offering your services to the town. I know you moved to the town. Yes. And a um, question is, are you a registered voter? Yes. Okay, please. I've been since I was 18. <coughs> Why, thank you, sir. There's actually, there should be one over there. Is there one here? Yeah, just take it, pick it up and push the button. Well, thank you. Okay. So, um, again, you're a registered voter, yes. new in town, yep. et cetera. Okay. Um, uh, the Appropriation Committee, have you been to any meetings at all? No. Okay. And have you spoken to anybody on the Appropriation Committee? Or Okay. Um, it, once the town meeting begins, there will be um, many meetings beforehand. Do you, would you have the commitment from this time forward? before town meeting to attend multiple meetings, possibly during the week or? Yes. Okay, all right. And um, if you're not appointed this evening, I see you have other um, interests in other areas. Uh, would you still be interested in any one of those other committees? I see you wrote Marathon and Yes, like sustain. I said, I'm excited to volunteer in whatever way I'm able to help. Okay, all right. Okay. The commitment does involve going to town meeting and... Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Mr. Catino. Um, yeah, I, thank you very much for coming forward. I really don't have many questions. I was actually writing my notes on there. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that's the most important thing is that, um, uh, that sometimes people don't always get their, their first choice. Mm -hmm. um, but um, thank you for coming forward because the town is only a town because of uh, all the volunteers. And just as the, the as the, for example, the the celebration we just had, um, we've got uh, one position and three people, and so I'm just really glad that we have uh, such a great choice because sometimes we don't. So thank you for coming forward. Of course. And Mrs. Sestari, how you doing? Hi, good. How are you? <coughs> no offense. Um, so where does your, uh, what's your interest in the Appropriations Committee? Uh, how does it, how does it originate? Uh, anything deeper than, I just, I just want to volunteer, which is great. I'm not taking that away from you at all. Yeah. Um, mostly it's because I have, obviously I grew up in Upton, mm -hmm. so I always was nearby Hopkinton, and I saw the way that Hopkinton treats the school versus the way that Upton treats the school, which I'm not saying Upton doesn't do a good job, because it does. But my mom's a teacher in the school, and um, she was 
actually in, worked in Milford, she worked at BBT, she's worked at a few different places, and um, I just kind of saw a lot of that, and I saw the way the budgets work, and I've always thought it was kind of interesting, mm -hmm. um, as well as wanting to kind of have my input, because of course, I mean, I'm young, you can tell I'm young. I haven't really gotten a lot of say, and I just bought a house, so I, this is the first time I've actually gotten to actually have my own like opinion and be able to volunteer and make my voice kind of heard. So um, it, I saw there was an opening, and I figured, why not see if I can put a little bit of my youngness in there a little bit, yeah. the youth vote. Great. Uh, you know, I'm all for uh, diversity of, of yes. opinions. Uh, you know, I think that um, uh, you know other folks tonight have already kind of reiterated, um, essentially from what is it, Pam? Probably from December to May uh, is the in early March to May is is a pretty intense uh, period. Yeah, yeah, two to three times a week uh, with meetings and and things like that. So that's the important thing is making sure that the members can commit to that type of time commitment, especially during that during that segment of the year mm -hmm. uh, so um, I have a lot of free time on my hands now that the wedding's done <laughs> <laughs> great. All right. I don't have any good thank you so much for coming forward again I think it's great uh, and I and uh, I think we've asked a lot of questions I actually served in appropriations for a long time mm -hmm. so um, uh, it is a good committee I mean I think you're, I think you're on to something um, I think uh, uh, I think there are uh, also, a number of other committees. You mean the marathon committee? To your point, does money. There's also capital improvements. There's um, there's trust funds, commissioner of trust funds, which you know is involved. Um, uh, there's a lot of these too. So, and I think you're also hitting on something really useful, which is sometimes overlooked by people, which is town government's a great way to get exposure to things like that and and learn about things that'll sort of a can be interesting and b can help you in, in the rest of your life as you move along. So, um, so I'm thrilled you came forward and. Uh, uh, and and we'll um, this is uh, we'll, again we're gonna we're gonna have a role for you here so okay, okay. good thank you very much for unless you have anything else to say no I'm good great thank you. okay so um, can I ask um, Suzanne Inman in the room hi welcome can I ask you to introduce yourself and and tell us why you want to do appropriations sure um, so I'm Suzanne Inman uh, live up on Grove Street. And mostly, I've been a homeowner in Hawkington for just a couple of years now, but my family's been here for a very long time. Okay. But since I became a homeowner, I noticed, uh, you know, taxes, things like that. And it occurred to me that I really ought to know, you know, I ought to know how we're spending our money. And I'm very interested in that. And that's why I want to get on the Appropriations Committee. Okay. It's because I just think it'd be a good idea to know where my money is going and how I can help direct it to where it needs to be. Although it seems to be handled pretty well in town. Yeah. <laughs> but I definitely want to learn how government works in town and just be more involved. Fabulous. OK. Are there any other um, committees you also are interested in? Just to, you know, off the top of case? my head, I can't think of any. OK. But I'm actually kind of interested uh, could volunteer for pretty much anything yeah again not I mean I'm, and again just to sort of list all the financially oriented ones I mean there's lots of these there's a pro obviously appropriations but then like I said there's capital improvements which are the folks that vote on the big projects um, there's again you know, there's trust fund commissioners there's um, all uh, there's by three or four others I can't think of off the top of my head so there's plenty of roles here and again as I as I said before um, to Jessica, there's there's certainly a lot of positions we can fill here, so we'll figure something out. Um, going over to Mr. Sestari, I'll start with you this time. Um, I don't I don't have any questions in particular. Um, you know, again, you know, we just we, we welcome people coming out and trying to volunteer for us. It's uh, um, you know, this is one of the good things. You know, it's it's the difficult decisions when you have multiple uh, applications for a, a single spot, but it's it's a good thing. So, okay. Mr. Catino. Um, oh, the, well, I was going to ask what I, I wanted to ask the last time. You're a registered voter in Hopkinton? I am. Okay, that's I, those, those, I know that was yours, but I voted okay. that last time. Um, uh, do you have, do you have a ca accounting experience or anything that? I, I don't actually. Okay. Um, and, um, oh, so uh, I, that, that, that's, I'm fine. Thank you very much for the application. Mrs. Holland. Suzanne. 
How are you? I'm great, Jerry. Good, good to see you. Um, it, with three candidates um, that have applied for this position, I would like to ask you, if you're not appointed, would you be interested in um, possibly volunteering or for another committee? I would, actually. You would um, be? Okay, good. Because sure. it's, it's wonderful when people come forward and they want to volunteer. So um, with three great, strong candidates, we, that would be good to know. I, I okay. think I was pretty focused when I was first um, putting into volunteers. I don't think I checked anything else off, but capital improvements, trust fund, um, hmm. I'm not even sure what else. Okay, good. Lots of thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. It's good to see you. Thank you. Suzanne, thank you so much for coming forward. I appreciate it. Well, so. thank you for the opportunity. Okay. And then, um, ran my eyes. Uh, Hanan Cohen. Sir, welcome. Could you introduce yourself and uh, just talk a little bit about why you want to be in appropriations? Uh, my name is Hanan. I'm living in Hopkinton for the past uh, four years. Um, currently, I'm serving on the 300th committee responsible for the finance. Um, through this committee, I kind of got to, uh, a little bit more exposed to the works of the town um, and essentially uh, tried to contribute as much as I can from my experience. I'm uh, a veteran uh, executive uh, in the high-tech industry. I'm currently uh, sort of semi-retired. I'm a, a management consultant for a few companies, especially in, the term, in, in operations and in finance. I have an MBA, and um, so I'm kind of trying to put my skills uh, towards uh, helping the town. Okay. Ms. Catino, any questions? Um, yeah, looking at, <coughs> look at your, your qualifications, it's, um, it's uh, impressive. Um, I'm not going to ask you about your accounting experience because you're on the three, 300th committee and handling all the finance and everything else. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you very much for coming forward. Thank you. Mrs. Holland. Um, again, I can see I agree with Mr. Catino how you do have the MBA and the experience of working with the 300th and you're uh, aware of the time and the commitment that yes. would be needed. Yes, that was um, uh, my prime concern and talking with uh, Jamie here, I made sure that <clears throat> the timing is right through my other obligations, so I'm, I'm fine. Okay, good. Um, if you're not appointed this evening, is there a, are there any other areas in which... Sure. Yeah. sure. Okay, good. Okay. Good. All right, thank you. Mrs. Sistari. Um, Hanan, have you had a chance to go to any of the appropriations meetings or speak with anybody who is currently on the board? As a matter of fact, I did, uh, but that was to get money for the 300. <laughs> <laughs> Position of supplicant. <laughs> so, yeah, I did uh, have a chance to participate in one. And you and still want to be with them. So you have an idea of how difficult they are, huh? And uh, <clears throat> when the I, yeah, I have an idea. And while this uh, idea floated that I will join the committee, uh, the chairman actually uh, was uh, suggested that I will go through the town records and, um, and see the minutes of the meeting, so I did that. So I have sort of a pretty good, uh, I wouldn't say pretty good, but I have an idea how the committee works. Uh, and I hope that my uh, experience will be able to enhance or commit uh, some additional uh, you know, point of views and try to make it uh, you know, a better committee. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. How not, uh, well, actually, maybe this question for, for the town manager. Would he need to resign from the 300th committee? He would, right? Because you're not allowed to have any other roles in town. So, I, That's, <laughs> yeah, I, I, made a, I made a commitment to Gene that I will uh, be able to complete my obligations to the 300. Now, I understand that the committee right now doesn't need uh, a member until December or something like that. And if that's the case, I think by December we should be sort of finished with all our, all our commitments. So I, th I don't think it will collide, but if it does collide, uh, my, my first priority is the 300. I, I want to make sure that everything is said and done there. Well, so we right. So, so this is where it gets complicated. So by the charter, you can't be in any other committees. Okay. So 
Yeah. Uh, I actually made predate the charter. Take it back, because I know I couldn't do it. I mean, Jerry, you'd know better than me. I couldn't do it when I was on. That was before the yeah. charter. Yeah. So it, it, it's, uh, it's in their charter, actually, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's in the Appropriations Committee charter. You're not allowed to be in any of the committees. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying you can't work with them, but you, you, uh, I'm 100% certain you can't be a member of that committee going forward. Am, or am I missing something? Go ahead, Mr. Kamalo. One suggestion would be um, if the board is doing inclined to, I want to print the board's decision, but if the board is so inclined to appoint him, you will, will not be so, you, you, won't, you, you won't take office as a member of the appropriations for me. Does, well, does his, does his role of whatever service he's providing to the 300th committee require that he be a member? the 300th committee. Gene is waving yes. Well, he's he's not elect he's not in office till he takes till he gets sworn in. So you I guess we've never done this before and I kind of like it, but I guess you could appoint somebody and just have him not get sworn in until yeah. <laughs> till December, but then does the Appropriations Committee need you is the question. Till December? You don't think so? I guess you go to all the meetings and just kind of hang out, but just not vote. I mean, you, got, you just have to be very careful. You just make sure you're, you know. I'm, I'm fine of being sort of a non-voting member. Well, no, non-member, yeah. non-member member, just non to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> non-voting non-member. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well. Until right. the time that I can be sworn in. But just to be clear, you'd be, for all intents and purposes, just a member of the general public. You'd have no speci special rights, no, no ability to, to, you know, I mean, you get this. Um, what do you think? As a town clerk, what do you think? I would have to really check into the, I'm, I'm not sure exactly for that answer, to be honest with you, Ben, and I don't want to give the wrong answer for that. Right. So is there any way... What's wrong, Norman? I'm sorry, Jerry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I apologize. Is there any way, if we were to take a vote, that it would be contingent upon, or until we, do you see what I'm saying? Over you, Mr. Kamala. Let me just Norman. Do you have a factual comment or something? Or? My understanding is that his role in the 300th celebration committee is winding down. Is that correct? Is that a fact? True, but still, there are. Yeah, it's winding down. But legal, but you know, by the charter, by the by the charter of the appropriations committee, he has to, he can't be on that. He can't be a member. So it's not the it's not the pragmatics, which I, I agree with you on. It's the the technical technicalities of the whole thing. He is not a member of the appropriations committee until he is sworn in. Right, but then I think there's you sent there's discomfort on at the board and at the town clerk for sure with the concept of a person who's been appointed yet not sort of taking the oath of office, right? Um, if I may, Mr. Chairman, we're only talking, we're only talking 10, 12 weeks. I don't really think about it. We're, um, you know, if, if we're talking November, there's November or December. Um, I don't... I just hate to lose a great candidate. Town Charter. My, my it's appropriation can be a charter. In, in terms of time, like I wasn't thinking about the same. I was thinking that he's raking up and this is not right. the If it's until December, then yes, there is. There may be the perception that he's holding two offices. Yeah. I, I know you can't hold two offices. Yeah. I know it's in the appropriations committee charter. I know it is. Yeah, I don't know if I'm comfortable with, you know, kind of juggling everything around to wait till December or January, but I would like to... I would like to see the charter, you know, where it says that, that's right. um, so that we can be sure that that's that's what it says, as opposed to just what our tradition was. You know. No, no, I know, I know, it's, I know, it's. I've read it. I'm, I'm trying to open the document right now. The charter language is pretty clear. No person holding any other elective or appointed office in his or her individual capacity shall be eligible to appointment. Eligible to appointment. So we can't even appoint him because he's not currently on another committee. So you got to make a choice. 
Well, well, no. Well, well, yeah, but I mean, to be a, to be eligible, he doesn't have to make a choice to be. He has to make a choice to be an eligible candidate. We have right, other candidates. Right. He also has to resign before he can be appointed. Oh, that's what that just said. That just said he had, that said he's not even eligible for appointment. Well, he's a member. Although I guess yeah, because you don't want to resign. Technically, he's not a member yet, so I guess he's eligible. Yeah, yeah you can't. You don't want to resign. Can I, you, can well, I yeah. resign from the three hundred, become the appropriation committee member, but assist? The 300 as a, as, uh, as a citizen. Yes. There's nothing. That's you, that you 100 percent can do. That's what I was trying to get. That's the path I was trying to get you to. That you 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 will have to you will have to resign from the 300th committee okay. if to be appointed to the appropriation. Committee. Yes, sir. In fact, the charter allows the appropriations committee to designate any of its members to serve as its representative on any other committee. Guess Except the, except the 300th charter doesn't have a doesn't have a, doesn't a slot have for an appropriation committee member, but he could in fact get appointed by us before he takes the oath of office. He resigns from the 300th committee, and then he can continue. I don't care if he hangs out with the 300th committee; he just can't be a member of the committee officially. Yeah, yeah can't so I can assist either. them in. Any and by the way, Jessica Suzanne might make a perfectly adequate right. finance person for for the 300th committee, and so right, so they can learn something from you. You know, that might be a pathway too. Yeah. It's an alternative yeah. if appointed tonight. Yeah, I'm just. I mean, yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm not being. I'm, but I'm just sort of working through the, the machinations of the thing. Okay, so if you were selected, mm -hmm. would you resign from the 300th committee? Un, you know, would you resign? That's a yeah. question. Yes. Okay. So the chair will rule him to be an eligible candidate based upon that statement. Mr. Sestari. Okay. I was just going to say, I think that he has to resign to be a candidate, but I'm fine. Either. I actually think it's backwards. I actually think it says if you're on the appropriations committee, you can't be a candidate to be appointed to anything else. Yeah, the other one. Exactly. So I think, it's, I think it's the opposite. I don't deny that he can't take the appropriation committee role while he's on another committee. That's why I'd have to resign first. Not, yeah. Picking at straws. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Holland, do you have anything to say? You look like you have something no, I think of great that, import. That if, if appointed this evening, that there could be the um, possibility of resigning, and then I understand that. So the order of operations would be if you were selected, you'd have to resign from the 300th before getting sworn in by mm -hmm. jury. Yes. If appointed, okay. Right. Check the timestamp closely. Okay. Does the board. Does the appointing committee, rather, have any further questions for Mr. Conan? I do not. I do not. Okay. We're good? Thank you so much. Sorry. Okay. So we've met three candidates. Um, we have at least three openings in town government. Um, does the chair entertain a motion to appoint uh, one candidate to the three-year term to expire June 30, 2016? Um, Mr. Chairman, first of all, I would, I would like to uh, thank all three candidates. And I'd also like to apologize to uh, Jessica and Suzanne for, uh, I guess, kind of us talking right in front of you. But this is, this is that whole thing about sausage being made, right? Um, I, would like, I would like to uh, nominate uh, Mr. Cohen for the position. OK, so we have a nomination. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, can we have, do we have any further discussion on this? Okay. So the motions to appoint uh, Hanan Cohen to the three-year term expire June 30, 2016 on the Appropriations Committee, subject to his resignation from the 300th Anniversary Committee in advance. Uh, we have no further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Present? Not voting? That's unanimous. So Mr. Cohen's appointed. Um, Suzanne and Jessica? I can't thank you enough for coming forward. I really, really, really mean this. I, I'd like you to, I'd like you to, to I, there's lots of other roles in, in town government I'd like to get you in on. You should talk to Jerry, you should talk to Jamie. Um, we have a meeting next week, so, so if you find something you like, you know, we can get this, we can get you going. So um, uh, I, I can't thank you enough for, because this is what we need more of in town. We're always saying we need more volunteers. I'm thrilled by the fact that you all came forward so quickly after moving to town or buying a house in town. 
um, uh, you're exactly the kind of folks we need. So we just got to find a good slot for you. Yeah, but we Mr. will. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a big push for capital improvements. Um, you know, it is it is a good tie to this committee. They work they work together uh, on a number of issues. Uh, currently, my belief is that they're they're really kind of in a lull right now as far as their membership. Um, just as as appropriations was what four years ago, uh, we were having a yeah. difficult time, you know, getting getting full membership there. Um, but you know, they could certainly use assistance over there. Uh, some hardworking people. We just don't have enough of them. And not to pitch them too much, but just to explain what they do. Everything that's cost more than twenty-five thousand dollars in town that we buy, which is a lot of stuff, unfortunately, has to go through them. And so, so what you get to do is you get to view all the big ticket items, get involved in that stuff. It's a great segue into dealing with committees to see how the town to town meeting works. Um, it would be a great entry point that I think is actually quite interesting. Um, uh, and your recommendation goes in front of town meeting on yeah. all of those items. So. You're making recommendations to us. You're making recommendations to appropriations as well as town meeting. So, yeah, so we have one. We have role. one slot on that, Jamie, right now. It's actually two. One of them is the board appointment. One of them is the appointment by the operator. Okay. So there's two slots. So we have two slots. Okay. We have a lot of things. We have a lot of places to go. Um, do we have any trails or anything or any out, any outdoors things for anybody? Zach, that's all full. Zach, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Kidding. That's a very good kidding, 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 kidding. So um, the advisory committee, is, oh, it's, it, that, that's, that's a board where we, um, we don't have a set number. And it's, we actually welcome uh, as many members as, as can fit around the table so that we can get a, a very diversified um, opinion base. So please look at the list. Come talk to anybody. And, uh, and please come back soon. And let's, let's get you get you involved while you still want to. Okay. Thank you all for coming in tonight. I appreciate it. And Anand, thank you again for coming in tonight. Thank you. Um, there, also, there'll be an open session on the 300th committee if you like, if you like a party. So uh, it's been great. And we'll, uh, we'll hopefully see you again soon. All right. With that, the, uh, the chairman of the appropriation, man, I hate to say this, appropriation committee, appointing committee will entertain a motion to uh, um, adjourn. Still Adjourn what? Second. The appropriation committee. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> we have a motion with a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, present, not voting. The ACAC is now adjourned. <laughs> uh, and the chair of the Board of Selectmen will now call the Board of Selectmen's meeting back into order. And we will pick it up with item eight on the agenda, which is center school reuse timeline. Um, I'm going to also take up at the same time. So item number eight is the Board of Consider Approving a Timeline to submit to MSBA, except not really, for the views of the center school. At the same time, I'm going to ask the town manager to address the draft special town meeting calendar, which is not item number 18, um, because they're tied together. So, Mr. Kamalo, you want to take it from here? Thank you. Um, I think this is with, with the timeline for the Center School. Um, Thank you. I think the discussion point here uh, is the, the expected date uh, for opening the new center in the school, which is in 2018. Uh, so that's perfect date in mind. Uh, my recommendation to post for those consideration is that the committee be in place uh, to review the issue uh, in the coming year. Uh, and we in a position to make a recommendation to the final town meeting in 2017. Uh, and then that gives the town a year to uh, prepare the recommendations for implementation uh, one year ahead of the opening of the <coughs> Okay. So just to repeat, um, target opening date is 2018. What you're saying is we want to, at town meeting, two, that's calendar 2018, so fall of 2018, what you'd want to do is at the spring of 2017, called a year and a half in advance, we would go to town meeting with a final proposal for how to deal with the center school once it's vacated by the schools and returned to the town custody. Okay, and so then the idea from there is backing up from spring of 2017, we want to get a committee moving, call it early next year, to give them a year to really look at the options, develop some alternatives. Um, and come with and come with that with a fully fleshed out thought or recommendation. 
Okay. Does anyone on the board have any questions about that timeline or any um, thoughts on the charter that we should ask the town manager to put together? Mr. Sistari. Um, I don't have any questions on the timeline. I just, I guess my questions are more around the specificity that the MSBA is requiring at this yeah, point. Yeah, we should cover that because it's, there isn't much actually. Mr. Kamal, you want to? Yes. Uh, and Mr. Is here. Oh, Mike Shepard's here from the MS okay, SBC. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, having attended all of the MSBA meetings that have been related to our school, um, they keep coming back to the same question, what are you going to do with the old school? It, it seems that um, their concern is based upon um, over time, what the MSBA has done is loan money to towns through grants to upgrade schools. And their concern overall is that they loan money, we upgrade the school, and then we sell it for condos. And the state is out that money. So their big, biggest concern is this is a box that the state bureaucracy has. What are you going to do with the old school? So pretty much every meeting they've asked the question, and pretty much every meeting we've given them the same answer. And essentially it was that the board would probably convene a panel to discuss the issue and would come up with some solution. I asked them pointedly at the last meeting a week and a half ago, what if we said it was going to be used for future municipal uses? Would you be okay with that? Yep, we'd be okay with that. Um, so it's, it's, it's checking off a box. I also asked them, what if we decide not to use it at the last minute for future municipal uses? I said that would be okay, too. So it's, it's not a giant issue from the state's perspective. It's just a box that has to be checked off. But <clears throat> it, um, it, it probably is an issue with the taxpayers, especially since we're, we're going into and potentially asking for a substantial amount of money to build a new school. And, a lot of people would look at, well, what are we going to do with the old school? Is that going to cost us money? If so, how much? Of course, we don't know those answers yet. But I think they'd be comforted to know that the uh, selectman has appointed a panel to look at the issue. And it might make it a little bit easier for us come um, the, the end of October when we go to special town meeting and ask for a substantial hunk of money. That's, that's about the best background I can give for you. There's no big secret. It's just that they're, they're going to keep asking us. And, and uh, it isn't that if we don't do anything, they're not going to give us any money, probably. It's just, it's a bureaucratic thing, and, and uh, that's all they're asking. Okay, so, so, you got, so you got two problems. The lesser problem, it's, in your opinion, it sounds like it's the MSBA, where you need to have an answer of s some vague nature. Yeah. Um, right, go ahead, I'm sorry. But so, so you know, I, I asked that question as well. Um, we're not in debt to the MSBA for anything that's been done to the center school. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have any records that show they've given us any money to upgrade anything. So mm -hmm. it isn't like they're looking for money back or anything like that. It's just, so if you've ever been in there, it's just like any other bureaucracy and it's just a box that they check off. And this box is still unchecked. So how do we solve your problem, Mike? So it doesn't sound like we need to. It doesn't sound like we need to have this a full blown. We do for the town's purposes. We're going to do a committee at some point, right? Yeah. We're going to do this thoughtfully. We're going to have an answer in spring of 2017. It sounds like the answer you need for the MSBA is much less significant, and is basically future municipal uses. As far as we know, currently it's going to be future municipal uses to yeah, be determined. They, 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 would, they would be happy if we decided to use that. Okay. You know, I think. The, 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 they just want to see that there's right. some planning going into the... So do you even need anything from us then from the MSBA? Or do you, sorry, just, do you even need anything from us for the MSBA in terms of, do we even need to vote that? I mean, is no, there I think even... what we need is we need to, even if it was a plan with a timeline such as uh, the town man suggested, MSBA, this is our plan, this is our timeline, we will appoint a committee, we should have... You know, we'll look at all the options. We should have, by the spring of 2017, decided what we're going to do with it. I think they'd be probably perfectly comfortable with that. It's just up to this point, they haven't even had a plan other than yeah. why is ask Mike telling them. But you haven't, but 
but that doesn't give you the answer I think you told us you want, which is municipal uses or not, this checkbox. Yeah. That doesn't give you that answer. That's the, that's the process to give the answer. Yeah. I think you want the answer now, and what you told us is, oh, there's no penalty if the answer later is different. No, so I, don't do think, we, I don't think we need, need the answer now. I think okay. they just want to be comforted that the town is going right. to, they're all about saving everybody money. Yeah. And they want to know that the town is going to enter into a process to figure out what okay. they're going to do, right. rather than wait until a new school opens and say, okay, goodness, what should we do now? Yeah. And, and right. I think that's all they want okay. is, you know, at this juncture, yeah. just, just the timeline. Then I okay. ask them for a magic bullet. Right. And I think that's our, I see our plan is to have a plan, right? I mean, that's basically what the answer is. We, we have a plan to have a plan. Um, uh, okay. Mr. Sestari, questions I was comments? Gonna, well, I was just going to say that was, I could sense that your comments were leading up to point two of the need yes. and the number two need being that of the taxpayers in Hopkinton right. looking for An you know, some reason, yeah, some answer what's going to happen to it mm -hmm. and from Mr. Shepard's comments you know he's saying it would help you know for October November whenever our special town meeting is going to be but that's not going to happen <laughs> well again I, I mean, think, we can have I a think, plan we can say we have a plan but yeah. we're certainly not going to be able to say it's going to be community use or yeah. I think for everybody's like purposes the answer is going to be to everyone we we have a plan to have a plan when yeah. we need it yeah. quite frankly i mean it's just it's just um which even even for you know let's say spring of 2017 we should be talking now about you know com uh, comparable projects you know or committees that we've had to pull together and how long do we think it's going to take them to research and come up with ideas or you know come up with options is it going to be a year is it going to be a year and a half is it going to be three months just so we get an idea backing into it when do we need to appoint this committee? Well, and just to frame this out, and I want to go over Mr. Catino for comments in a second, but just to frame this out, I think what the conversation tonight is, is meant to do is to say, A, is that the answer we want to have, which is we have a plan to have a plan. B, it's to, back, it's to get the deadline to, to dates agreed upon that that's what we think is appropriate, right? So do we all agree that spring of 2017 town meeting is appropriate, and then you want to back up 18 months, which is sort of how long these things have historically just taken, right, this to now. early 2016 <laughs> to get started, right, which means... If you want to get started in 2016, then you back it up and you got to get the charter written and get this thing posted yep. this fall. So do we all agree those dates? And then if we all agree on that, part three would be to, to ask the town manager to then go forth and draft a, a, a draft charter that we could then discuss among ourselves, probably get some comments from the SBC to the extent they have any sensitivities, right? Sort of circulate that a little bit in the next few weeks. Um, uh, there where, you know, and again, my thought would be we'd circulate that kind of the rest of this month, and then maybe the October meeting, maybe the second October meeting, we could sort of dot, do it, post it, and have everyone on board by the end of the year. So that's, I think, sort of how this is evolving. Mr. Coutinho, do you have any comments no, that, on this? No, that, that's, that's exactly the way that, that I'd like to see it broken up, is, is separate the two issues. And, um, and uh, I think our main goal has to be to uh, please the uh, voters and the taxpayers. Yeah, amen to that. Does that solve your problems? I I didn't have a problem. I, you know what I'm saying, though. No, but does that does that does that give you? Let me say it differently. Does that give you the answers you need yeah, for the I, I uh, for think your as long constituencies? As we can articulate that to the MSBA the way you did would be yeah. fine, and perhaps a letter from the town manager to that extent, and they'll they'll be happy. Okay. And, and you know, the second part is if we get some thing by the middle of October, the end of the October might be work out well for all of us. Who knows? But uh, okay. I, I know the question will come up as to what we're going to do with it. Right. I just hope someone is prepared to eloquently express that we have a plan to have a plan. Yeah. And well, we'll stand up. I mean, we'll be part of this at town meeting. So, okay. Thank you. So, thank you, Mike. So, just rehashing then, Mr. Kamala, does this make sense to you? I think the idea would be the board would, I think the consensus opinion here would be let's, could you, could you draft a charter for us um, on a center school uh, whatever it be, resolution committee, I guess, whatever we want to call it. Could we circulate a draft charter to the board, to the school committee, I think, since they're the owners of it right now, to the ESBA, ESBC, certainly, just to see if they have any sensitivities or any thoughts about how it should be structured. Then could we plan to, at the second October meeting, which will be the uh, uh, 21st, I think, 22nd, could we at the second October meeting plan to have the charter in front of us reviewed by everybody that we could then 
vote to approve, and then we could get those positions posted and have all those people appointed before the end of the year. Does that make sense to you, Ms. Kamal? Makes sense. Is there anything it's missing that we should, um, we should add? No, we're good. You, you get the idea. You've done this. Okay. Does the board have any other comments or thoughts about how we should do that? Oh, it came off the agenda. I forgot to mention okay, that. Thank you. Thank, you for, uh, thank you so much for telling me. Does, does anyone else on the board have any other? Um, okay. No. Okay, good. So I don't think we need a motion on that. I think we get the idea. Mike left. Mike's good. You're good? You're good? Okay. Uh, I should have pointed this out before, and this is my failure. There was a, there was a, on the agenda was a posted public hearing at 8 o'clock for 110 Grill Hopkin, LS Hopkinson LLC. They actually requested that it come off the agenda for this week. And so that's why I didn't open the public hearing at 8 p.m., just for the official record. They're actually next door at Planning Board. Oh, right. Okay. So the chair, the chair will acknowledge his flaw, his failure, and um, entertain a motion to open a posted public hearing for 110 Grill LS Hopkinton LLC um, to consider approval of an application for a Section 12 all alcohol license for 77 West Main Street Hopkinton LLC and forward to the ABCC for their affirmation as well consider approving a common victual license and entertainment license. So moved. Okay. Second. We have a motion with a second. Uh, all in favor of opening the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Present? Not voting. Okay. And now the public hearing is open. Chair is going to continue the public hearing without um, any action because the proponent has asked that we push this to a future agenda. Right? Yes. Okay. Chair's, chair's failure there. Sorry about that. Thank you for pointing out to me 10 minutes too late. I thought, eight, I, should probably I thought we took it off. My failure. Okay. Okay. Uh, on to, we have 10 more minutes for item 12. Um, oh, yeah, we still, we're going to come back yeah, to we're that. Still that. We're Let's still Let's come back to special time meeting calendar. Yes. This is item 18 on the agenda. Uh, the draft special time meeting calendar. Ms. Kamal, you want to just walk us through um, yeah. the highlights here? Yes. Um, in fact, thanks to Jenny, we, we have a we have separated handout with two signs. There's one side with detailed information, one of the paid reports to the summary page. The key dates being Tuesday, September 22nd, the board may vote to open a special town meeting warrant. Tuesday, September 29th through Friday, October 2nd, the board may vote to place articles and center school debt exclusion question on a special town meeting warrant, notify the town clerk in writing to place the ballot questions on the ballot. Thursday, October 8th, special town meeting warrant closes at 4.30 p.m. in the selectman's office. And on Friday, October 9th, selectmen meet to sign this special town meeting warrant. And on Friday, October 16th, this is important for the election. We verify the dates with the town clerk. That's the latest date to register to vote for special town meeting. And then Tuesday, October 20th, that's the last date to register to vote for the special town election. And then Monday, October 26th, is the proposed town, special town meeting date with the election scheduled for Monday, November 9th. So again, the special town meeting warrant opens September 22nd. And the intention is to have the special town meeting October 26th and the election November 9th. And what's driving those dates, Mr. Kamala? Um, continuing conversations between our office, the town clerk's office, and the chair and vice chair of the uh, and the school as well as the OPM. But is any those dates just picked, or is there anything that's forcing those dates to be those dates? Oh, we have to comply with the timelines outlined in the uh, No, I'm sorry, not, the, not those dates. I mean, <laughs> I mean, MSBA the, deadline. The, the, yeah, is there an or MSBA deadline like we're trying to meet or something? What's, what's driving the, the, the fact we need to meet October 26th? That's what I'm trying to understand. From my perspective, I'll let Mike a comment on this. I would say, I want to emphasize the fact that the elementary school building committee feels ready to deliver the, the product under this timeline. There may be some connotations or implications for the MSBA schedule, but from my perspective, mm -hmm. part of the team 
they believe they are ready to, be, to deliver by the 26th. Yeah, okay. yes, sir. Later this month, the MSBA is going to sign on with us with their share of the portion they're going to give us. Uh, with that information, we know what the budget is. The budget is a little bit less than what was presented to you folks back midsummer. Uh, so we're good there. Um, we, we know the issues that revolve around a, a special town meeting and have a special town meeting, the cost, the inconvenience, we know all of that. Um, we feel that it's a, a very important item for, for the town. Um, we would, would rather not put it off and get into the holiday season and all the inconvenience that would cause families. Okay. And <clears throat> given Mr. Hur's recommendation and, and what we always thought anyway, we've already started with our, our uh, educational um, program to make sure the taxpayers are aware of what they're getting into in terms of the cost, the, mm -hmm. the tax impact, et cetera. So we have a scheduled plan to work up right up to the 26th to make sure that um, as, as well as possible that there is no one that's unaware of what the issues are. Um, but we do understand there will be someone. And, um, um, but we, we think we can prepare, be prepared for the 26th. In fact, we know we can. There's, the state by that point will be on board with us, absolutely, um, and it will be a fixed number. And uh, I, I, I think um, we'd, we'd, we'd like to have you folks set that, you know, uh, uh, town meeting night for the 26th of October. We can certainly work with that. And um, we're working with D, uh, DRA, the architectural firm, as well as Compass, to make sure we have all our ducks in a row. We'll have a, a good presentation for town meeting and hopefully it will go seamlessly. Okay. Uh, Ms. Catino, questions, comments? No, no, no. Mr. Sistari, questions, comments? Um, you know, I guess my, my only comment is the timing in general, uh, which, which you know, you know, having people come out to take a vote for the election day when this is, you know, the only, you know, the only thing. You know, uh, understanding here that, that it's a big thing. <laughs> But, uh, you know, just making sure that not only are people educated, but they're motivated. Yeah. The, the other part, the, the, the unspoken part, is we've been planning all along to have an opening for the school in September of 2018. Yeah. And in order to hit that, we have to have this vote this fall. Right. And, and um, if, if it was in November, it, it, it wouldn't hurt. I, I just, you know, being a taxpayer as you, there's a lot of stuff going on in November, and, and you're you push it up against the holidays, and and uh, I think earlier is better. Um, we've we've done up to this juncture a pretty good job in educating everybody, and you know, we'll give it a full court press between now and the 26th. And yeah, yeah, I absolutely understand the inconvenience. There's no question. And uh, but I also understand that you know a, a new school in a community of our size is a pretty a relatively large question, and I don't suspect we're going to have any problem with turning people out one way or the other. Tell them there's fireworks. Yeah, yeah same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think we have any comments as to this timeline, so I think, I think the consensus of the board, it seems like, is, is let's, let's aim for this. Great. Thank you very much. Thank folks. you. Appreciate okay. it. Thanks, Mike. Good. So that's item 18 out of the way. Ms. Kamal, you want to just give us a quick, um, I don't see the, the folks for number 10 here. Do you want to just give us a quick update in the fire chief hiring process? Item number 14. Yes, um, the, the committee is in place. Um, we uh, included John Moja, who is an Indian celebrity. Uh, both Are we still on track to get this person on board before the end of the year? Because it's getting close. Getting close, working tight. I think we, as we've said before, uh, in other hiring processes, we'll be very deliberate, we'll be very careful, but we want to move forward. 
Okay. Mrs. Starry, questions? No questions. Mr. Katina, questions? No questions. Okay, so that's that item. Okay. Moving around, Mr. Katina, moving around. All right, still waiting on the proponent for uh, item number 10. Uh, let's see, Mr. Kamalo, I'm going to take item 13 off the agenda tonight. Um, well, actually, we, we, can, we can start with your goals, but I want to finalize it next week with the full board here. Uh, can we go to item number... We're out of things we can talk about. We can pick it up. Are we, are we going to have the proponent here tonight for this? Here's the issue with the street. Well, so I'll pick it up here, and then we'll, we can talk about this. So street name approval. This is item number 15, the agenda. Street name approvals, Hopkins and Muse, an action item. The board will consider approving four street names for Hopkins and Muse residential development. The names suggested by the proponent are, in order of preference, Potter Mill Road, Freedom Way, Constitution Court, Revere Lane, Independence Place, Revolutionary Way, Patriot Lane, and Hancock Path. Uh, there are significant comments from the... Um, uh, a number of uh, town committees, um, fire department, planning board, zoning department, um, relating to uh, three of those names, Revere Lane, Patriot Lane, and Pottle Mill Road, which at least one, if not more, uh, department has objected to. So I'll just point the board's um, eyes toward that. And again, the, the three that are the issue are Pottle Mill Road, Revere Lane, Patriot Lane. Um, uh, does the board have uh, any comments on this, um, Mr. Catino? No, I, 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 I normally I would have just gone with the the, um, the the first four that the proponent likes. But if we just pull out the two, the three that the everybody else doesn't, let's just go and let's continue in that order. And, uh, pick them up, you know, pull out what's okay. part of mill. So your proposal essentially is Freedom Way, Constitution Court, and that's alliteration, Independence Place, and Revolution right away. Yeah. Mrs. Starr, you have any comments on all this? Um, I can go with those. Okay. So the chair will entertain a motion. So moved. Yeah. So, so to pick uh, Freedom Way, Constitution Court, Independence Place, and Revolutionary Way for the uh, four street names for the Hopkins Muse. Second. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Do we have further discussion? Do you have any comments on this before I, before we make it official? No comments. Uh, okay. Got the four names. Got the four names. Okay. So motion, second, further discussion. Uh, all in favor, I uh, say aye. 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 Opposed, present, not voting. Okay, that passes. So the new road names are Freedom Way, Constitution Court, Independence Place, and Revolutionary Way. Uh, let's move to fiscal year 2015 goals, if we can. Um, I'd like to start this tonight, but I think we'll wait for the full board to make a conclusion on them. This is for the board to set the goals for uh, Chief Lee and, um, and the town manager. Ms. Kamalo, can you uh, open the bidding here by providing us with your, um, with your proposed fiscal year 2016 goals? No, they're right here. Okay, good. Thank He's you. Handing them off. Okay. Thank you. We're just knocking them out. We're just. You know. <coughs> hmm? We can't get them in. I know. We can't keep them here. Are you here for the solar? Yeah. Um. Why don't we take up that since Mr. Kilduff's here? Okay. So why don't we, well, the chair is going to flex, having flexed to the goals, the chair is going to flex away now, and the chair is going to um, pick up item 11, which is East Main Street Solar Farm, discussion action item. The board will discuss the East Main Street Solar Farm proposal. So the background here is that um, there's been a proposal in front of the planning board for a, a very large solar farm on East Main Street. Um, uh, it's it abuts town town owned property in the legacy farms development it's it's on the the uh, the roadway obviously into and out of town which 
one of the major thoroughfares in town. And so there had been some concerns raised by, um, by a couple groups, 26.2 Foundation, by the Parks and Rec Commission, about the scope of the project and also about its, its, its effect on the viewscape of the entryway into town. And so last week, or a couple weeks ago, in anticipation of the board discussing this, uh, the chair actually sent the letter to the planning board asking them to, to hold off on anything until the, the board had a chance to discuss this, given the fact that we had one, we had a group of committees that were potentially in opposition to each other on a policy issue, and one of the items in the charter is for the board to try to facilitate um, uh, harmony among board decisions. So I know this is on the agenda for the planning board tonight um, to discuss again. Uh, uh, I think the key questions to the board are, is this something we have a concern in? Is this something that the issue remains? And I, th and I heard today there may have been a breakthrough and, and there may be um, harmony once again reigning in the, between those boards. And does the board want to um, uh, interject itself with the planning board on behalf of those committees um, to ensure, if necessary, that, uh, that uh, their concerns are, are fully vetted? So that's the, the topic at hand. Again, I think we had a late breaking news here tonight that there was a, a positive resolution. So, Mr. Kilduff, do you want to do you yeah. speak on behalf of, of 26.2 or anybody well, else? Yeah. No. And I, I think I Mr. Sonnet's here too, and it looks like we have, we have a few folks who could maybe come in and comment. The, the work that um, all of you do is, uh, is it in, inside a structure and uh, I, I particularly understand that, but sometimes um, decisions and, and discussions get done informally uh, outside of that, that formal context. Um, I can tell you uh, that um, the chairman's letter uh, a couple of weeks ago was provided some real impetus uh, for some serious discussions to, to, to take place and to move forward. Uh, Parks and Rec. Um, did an absolutely terrific job in, ex, in, um, in really doing serious due diligence on what could have been, um, I think, a um, situation that might be described as negative. Uh, there was a lot of concern about view sheds uh, and a lot of concern about the possibility of adjacent property and the, some of the ideas that we've shared with you about the International Marathon Center. Um, th there was a, an extremely positive uh, there's a, a lot of people put their back behind this, and I, I, I said it once, and let me say it one more time. So the, 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 a letter from uh, your uh, board, uh, from the chairman, helps push all of those kinds of, kinds of discussions along at a quicker pace. Uh, I'll, let, uh, I'll let Mr. Sonnet talk about uh, sort of the, some of the details of the negotiations that took place last night. Uh, I can tell you from the foundation's point of view, we offered Scott Richardson from Gorman Richardson Ar Architects, uh, who has done a lot of work with us, to look at the site. He looked at the site. He made several recommendations, uh, and all of those recommendations uh, were, were adopted. Uh, there was strong, uh, strong discussions and strong debate last night, led in, in part by, uh, by Eric Sonnet, and uh, I'll let him talk to you about the details. From the foundation's point of view, uh, <clears throat> we will uh, be the recipient of a, of a rather substantial contribution uh, that will help us to move the concept of this International Marathon Center uh, together very uh, forward very, very quickly. So we're excited about that. Uh, and, and it, will, it will give us the, the bump that we need to, to uh, do the next step. Uh, and that is to go out and uh, put together a, a professional a prospectus and to start raising serious money from, from high net worth people and corporations. So we're pretty excited about this. But in terms of the, the negotiations between Parks and Rec, I think Mr. Sonnet's the appropriate person to address that. Mr. Sonnet, can I make some comments? Sure. The, uh, we were sort of the uh, come late to the party group. Uh, negotiations on view sheds and and uh, butters had been going on for a considerable amount of time before uh, Parks and Rec was brought into the party. Initially, we weren't happy at all. 
the, uh, we felt that the uh, screening was inadequate. We thought it would be a detriment to the town's property that we're inheriting from uh, Legacy Farms. And as a result, uh, we attended the planning board meeting four weeks ago and raised our concerns. Since that time, uh, well, subsequent to that, we, uh, or immediately after that, we asked Scott Richardson to do a topo review of the property from two standpoints. If it were just a parks and rec facility with very low slung buildings or fields or whatever, what would the view shed look like? And what would the view shed look like if the Marathon Center were located there and it would be a multi-story building? Well, Scott did his topo review of it and he worked with the solar company and quite frankly, the solar company incorporated every single recommendation that Scott had. And the most significant and from my standpoint is at the eastern edge of the town's property is a stream. And the stream goes from a pond and it goes under Main Street. What they did is they moved the entire screening to the east so that that whole uh, wild stream pond is now visible from the town's property and then the screening comes after that. So it's opened up just a very dynamic uh, view on our property. In addition to that, uh, we moved, uh, uh, last night we moved a 25 foot buffer in some areas to be 50 feet. And the process had started with the solar company offering $15,000 in mitigation to fill in the blank spots later. Well, over the last four weeks, that 15 has grown to $80,000 with a provision that six months after the completion of the solar uh, piece of it, we'll have a walk of the property to view what it really looks like uh, yeah. when, when the plantings are in and have a chance to develop. We sort of made it uh, six months afterwards or the following growing season because if six months after is in January, you're not going to see very much. <coughs> so basically, we feel very happy. We voted last night unanimously to uh, support the project with our five conditions. And uh, based on their activity or the solar's activity so far, we feel very comfortable. The other thing we were worried about was making sure 26.2 was adequately taken care of, and they came to agreement mm -hmm. uh, from a legal standpoint yesterday and probably this morning. Okay. So we felt good that they were protected also. Okay. Thank and, you. Uh, any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Scott, can you talk about your architectural, we're talking about the, the, the solar farm, and I think, could you just talk, about how comfortable you are with this, and I think the concern, well, it sounded, we had, we had a couple of concerns. A, we had a concern about harmony of, of boards, but it sounds like that's all been solved now. The second concern about, is about just um, uh, damage to the view shed on a major thoroughfare to and from town, right? That's sort of the centerpiece of the marathon, among other things. Could you just talk about the extent to which you're comfortable that, that this farm is or is not going to you know, be a, be a horrible scar on the landscape that everyone has to see every day? Well, I think, uh, again, we all had, when we first looked at the plan, we were all kind of uh, a little concerned, well, major concern about what is this going to look like and what is the view shed from East Main Street uh, as well as uh, from adjacent properties, uh, basically with the information that was supplied from Rich and just a review on site and driving by, uh, again, we kind of made our list of what our requirements were, mm -hmm. our suggestions, uh, for uh, screening and mitigation, uh, and then also again the last proviso is, you know, was to say okay that's all well and good to install this, put up the mitigation, but let's let's really walk through this uh, six, seven, eight months later mm -hmm. to ensure that we do have uh, you know we have mitigation to really uh, screen the, yeah. the solar farm from major views. So, so. You're, are you screening it from the town's property only or are you also screening it from the roadway? From, yeah, both from East Main Street and from the Parks and Rec property and okay. potentially the future 26.2 
Okay, so you looked at this from all perspectives. Right. Good. Yes. Okay. Um, anybody got any questions, Ms. Cotino? Questions, comments? No, no, I just want to say thank you for, uh, for looking, at, uh, looking at it from the, from the street because when I first heard about the, the solar farm, I, just, I was concerned that this would be the culmination of all the fears of, of all the residents of, of Hopkinton when, when the, the land was first sold to Legacy Farms, that they're going to see this big overbuilt area with houses where they were used to seeing these rolling hills and farmlands. And then now they were just going to see um, solar panels. And not that I want to sound like one of the Nantucket resident when the Cape Wind was coming in, you know, Understood. miles offshore, not in my backyard. However, I just wanted to make sure that the town was, you know, that, that we're not just putting up this, uh, a, a blight. So thank you very sure. much. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mr. Sestari, questions, comments? No, I don't have any questions. Uh, you know, comments, of course, you know, um, we're, we're, in favor of these uh, um, green energy sources, but at the same time, we need to be cognizant of the, the view shed, uh, as people have said. And, um, you know, that's something that we need to be aware of and we need to work toward. And, you know, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Tim, Eric, you know, for your work on this and everybody else. Okay, good. So everyone's content? I mean, yes, Mr. Sonic, more? Okay, good. I mean, it's unfortunate it had to go down this path from a process perspective wasn't great, but at least we got to the right answer, I think, at the end of the day. So, right on. So, Mr. Uh, Kamalo. Yes, um, I also want to uh, echo the board's comments relative to the work that the Park and Red Commission, as well as the Tennis is going to, that scores to, uh, that you deal with the proponents to mitigate the impact of this project on the town. Uh, going forward, I still want to make the plea to the proponent that this project is located in town uh, and we appreciate the public benefits that have been identified and procured through this negotiation. However, going forward, I think we still want to look into the opportunity of making sure that uh, the energy uh, uh, credits that we have uh, are not simply extracted from Hockington and afforded to another community. We in Hockington have affordable uh, housing units. We have a senior center that is vibrant. We also have uh, a, a housing authority program that is benefiting a great number of individuals. And we would like to continue to pursue opportunities for affording the electricity uh, uh, credits uh, to, those, to those projects in town. The point here being made is that I grew up in Zimbabwe. And what I remember were industries that were extracting coming to the country, extracting resources. I really don't want solar so here in Hockington to be seen in that regard. We were very excited in town when we uh, signed the agreement with Solar. And do you know why? Because... It's in somebody else's town. In in, in <coughs> However, we made sure that before signing on to the agreement, that Hollystone, as the host of the project, also benefited from that. That's not happening in this case. We in Hockington would like to benefit uh, from the credits as well. Uh, I know there may be limitations, but I just want to make sure that this is put out there. Has this been addressed with the planning board as part of their process? And do we, given that they, they have they already voted it? So. I mean, unfortunately, this is a situation where it would have been very nice if the planning board had interacted with the Board of Selectmen in advance of all this, right? Because this got airdropped on us four weeks ago, and it sounds like this was a much larger project that shouldn't have been handled the way it was. So I will, I will note my regret in that, that that may not be water under the bridge. So um, it's unfortunate there was no interaction about that beforehand. Okay. Thank you all very much for your, your support. Thank you for helping protect the viewshed. You know, this will hopefully be a good project for town because it doesn't. I'm sure the next solar farm is going to be a much more difficult process for everybody. So thank you again. Thanks, guys. Okay, we'll go back now to item 10 on the agenda. Um, this is Bill's Pizza and Restaurant Kino Application Discussion Action Item. The board will have a discussion whether to object to a Kino license, Kino license being granted to Bill's Pizza and Restaurant by the Mass State Lottery Commission. There are some supporting exhibits, which is primarily a Lottery Commission application. Uh, Mr. Kamal, anything to say before we go to the proponent? Just in summary, um, the town received the notice from the Mass State Commission on September 3rd, 2015. 
Uh, the town has on September 24th uh, to present its uh, position on the application. Um, in, in, consistent with the law, uh, a notice was posted in the local press. Uh, and tonight, the people can discuss the, 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 the project based on the uh, characteristics of the project provided by the proponent. Okay. Proponents here, do you want to come up, come up and tell us who you are and what you want to do? Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. I'm George Vasilakaris. I'm the manager of Bill's Pizza. And we applied for a kino license. As far as we know, we got the group from the state. And here we are. As okay. Pretty straightforward. Me <laughs> <laughs> and a few words. Is that right? Very, very succinct. Mr. Catino, over to you. Questions uh, about questions, comments about this whole thing? Yeah, I just uh, you know, you know, thank you for for being a uh, a a centerpiece of our downtown because uh, you've really kept us going um, for for several years in, in the transition of new things opening. Now we've got a yoga beach and everything else, and uh, it's uh, you, you're the place where all the kids have been going for years and years, and I uh, really appreciate it. And um, no, I really don't don't have any. It's it's good to see that that you're expanding and doing some more stuff in there, and and um, uh, looking like you want to stay in town for many years to come. I do. Thank you, Mr. Sestari. Um, you know, I I agree with Mr. Catino. Uh, you know, I love having you in the center of town. You guys are. A great business. You've been very supportive to the community, uh, and we appreciate that. You know, I love coming in for pizza and a Coke or a beer or whatever. Um, I guess one of my questions for you, though, on on the Kino is, I guess what um, what's what's your goal with it? I mean, do you, do you that think it's going to? That is not an actual goal. It was something that customer customers kept asking and. We said we'll try it. So you're not expecting it to change the profile of your customer or anything like that? that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just ask the police chief if uh, if he sees. It. Do you have any concerns with this? Well, personally, I lose. I keep it all the time. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, I don't see any problem. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, so, it, what what? What's entailed with Kino? I know they got the machine. Do you have to put up extra screens all around? And the state provides a couple extra screens. That obviously, it's for the game, and that's it. Yeah. There are three equipment altogether. Okay. And are there limitations on the hours that the state allows you to have no. the machines running? No, no they could be going 24-7 if, if they wanted. No. I won't do that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so I think the process from here is we only have to do anything if we have if we intend to file an objection, right? And no action just means that we have nothing to say about this. We don't actually have to take a formal a affirmative vote, I don't think, do we? Maybe we have a for the next question to take a formal vote. A formal vote of no objection. Okay, so the chair will entertain a motion if anyone has one to make. Mr. Chair, I I move that uh, the board vote to not file an objection with the Massachusetts State Lottery Commission with respect to Bill's Pizza and Restaurant Kino application. That's okay. formal. I'll second the, that formal. All right. Well, motion, second, vain for a discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, President, voting that passed unanimously. Thank you. Good luck with that. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Okay, I'm uh, moving right along to item 12 on the agenda, fiscal year 2015 performance evaluation review. It's an action item. The board will conduct a performance evaluation for the fire chief. Last time in, in, the, in the fire here, so for, for the fire chief. Ken, welcome up. Uh, sorry for being so long getting yours done, but we, you know our schedules just didn't sort of work. So, um, and you've had, you got the review in advance, right? We gave it to you, we got it a while yep. ago. Yep. Okay. Um, before I, I was just going to read that. Generally, what I do is I just read the goals and then the summary. Is there any, anything you want to talk about before I read it, or should I just kind of go? Okay. So, um, again, the idea here is um, do your review for the period end of June 30th, 2015. You had one, two, three, four, I guess four goals this year that I'm uh, 
mentioned. First one was the 2015 Boston Marathon. Uh, the measure was successful creation, implementation, and execution of an incident action plan, incident communications plan, identification of events, sectors, and sector leaders, and training and tabletop exercises. This was, of course, a resounding success, as it has been every year when you've been doing a chief. Um, uh, the comment here is that, uh, as we've come to expect, Chief Clark prepared himself, his department, and Corps of Safety Professionals exquisitely for the 2015 Boston Marathon. That preparation and professionalism is on display in the form of a seamless execution of the plan, despite the <laughs> unignorable, really, is that even a word? Presence of safety officials, those under the Chief's jurisdiction present themselves as unobtrusive. Okay, a lot of uns. It was excessively, extremely well done, as usual. You've done a spectacular job every year. Did a wicked good job. Spe <laughs> <laughs> okay, second is public safety dispatch. That was supposed to be done by January of this year. Uh, was identify scope of action, identify project manager, identify minimum operational requirements, and identify efficiency gains. This has been judged a success to date. Project's still ongoing. The chief has continued to shepherd this project through the implementation phase, and everyone continues to believe this is a positive direction for the dispatch function. Well, the chief did complete the, um, by the way, this was all, I think, finished up post this review. While well, the chief did complete the objective state in the fiscal year goals and objectives document, part of this was to identify the implementation schedule. The schedule has been publicized and missed due to administrative delays, but again, that's all been dealt with at this point. That's what's gone away. Hopkins International Collaboration was item three. Uh, the idea was to actively participate and contribute his leadership to the Hopkins International Collaboration model. Assist in developing and implementing f models and secu support secure need assistance. This was graded a success. This has been a multi-year honor for Chief Clark, and he performed well against the board's expectations. Tan recently made a decision to, to, to not pursue this evaluation of possible collaboration. Um, but again, the whole idea was to evaluate the feasibility, and the Chief did a spectacular job, of course, and, and um, uh, was a driving participant and effectively helped us make an informed decision. So even though we didn't do that, Chief, you were a terrific contributor to helping us get to what I think was the right conclusion. And the fourth is a performance metric system uh, uh, that was done by, due by the end of this year. Progress made but incomplete due to matters beyond the chief's control, which I think is primarily related to union uh, negotiations. So all in all, I think uh, all, all the goals, um, the, probably the largest ones, were dealt with. And I think the other ones were dealt with as best you could. Um, I will, in just sort of in the interest of time, just skip to the summary. Chief, I mean, as we know, you're, you're in the, 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 the final end here of, the, of a lengthy career. And... Um, uh, this is not obviously the final time we'll talk about this, but in terms of the summary performance, it, it just says the chief is in the final stretch of an outstanding career that has spanned decades of selfless service to the town of Hopkinton. I think that encapsulates in one short sentence um, an incredible amount you've done for the town. Uh, the past year has been challenging in, in some respects, of course it always is, but overall Chief Clark has performed about satisfactory. So the board's obviously thrilled with your performance, continues to be, um, and uh, uh, I don't know there's any more to say. So before I go to the board for comments, do you have any, any questions, issues, concerns about this? Oh, I, think, I think the only thing I'd like to say is that uh, going back to one of the objectives, the uh, public safety dispatch was put into place for our 300th Correct. anniversary, yeah. Saturday and Sunday, and uh, brand new, uh, and the, uh, the personnel at, at Chief Lee's office did an outstanding job, the new personnel that were in there, and it worked uh, for the first two times it was brought up, it was, uh, it was flawless. Outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. I actually went in the van or the bus, whatever you call it, to see that though. It was, ter it was terrific. It was a very nice setup. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sestari. Um, Chief, great job. Um, you know, I was, I was on the board when you were appointed chief and there was no better candidate. Um, we, we wouldn't have been able to find a better candidate if we continued looking. Um, you know, you were, you were great in this role and continue to be uh, a model. Um, one of the things that, you know, as we, as we go through your objectives and your review each year, um, hey, you, don't always, you don't always hit all of the goals, but that's not a problem because one of the things that we constantly see is improvement, and that's how you've gotten to where you are in your career, uh, is constantly trying to improve yourself uh, uh, at a professional level. And that's one of the things that we appreciate from you and the other leaders in our community. So, um, you know, I'd like to, to just thank you for that professionalism. There will be more meetings where we're thanking you even more over the next few months. But, um, but this last year, uh, you know, I think you did a great job, and we appreciate everything you did for the community. So, thanks. Mr. Coutinho, over to you. Yeah, I just want to say I, was, I really want to 
uh, thank you for your professionalism and leadership and, and your continuing to not do that the lame duck or l do the uh, short term uh, mm. short term disease uh, a short time of disease you know point. you're hanging right in there you you you're, you're working as hard as ever and it's really appreciated it you know it, just the other night you know how, how much people appreciate having you in town at the at the, the fireworks and all the accolades you were getting so it's it's really appreciated the only thing my only concern is What's going to happen to the new chief is going to be the same thing happened to the police chief for the for the next uh, marathon, where it's going to be trial. That's how I say trial by fire. But so uh, the new guy's going to come right on and have to fill in fill in those big shoes of yours and and uh, run the marathon and all that stuff. But uh, but thank you for everything you've done. It, uh, it, it was, you really hit the, hit the numbers. I appreciate it. All right. So I think again, board thrilled. Couldn't be happier. We're not going to bother to set fiscal year 2016 goals for you. <laughs> so, but, but you're right. I mean, and, and I think you, you hit it on the head. The, 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 this weekend was a terrific capstone for you. I mean, in some respects, those fireworks were for you and, and, and all the, I mean, seriously, and all the, just the event going off without a hitch. I mean, we had one skateboard collision. I think that was the worst thing that went wrong. But I, I mean, but you had everybody there. You had the whole setup all ready to go. It was just, it was just terrific. So. Um, we're happy when, that, when nothing goes wrong and you're ready. So we've been very happy always having you here. Um, you give great comfort to everyone, I think. So, uh, uh, and again, this isn't the final time we'll have you in here to, to, to talk to us, hopefully. Um, so with that, Chair, I a motion to uh, approve the Fire Chief's uh, 2015 performance evaluation. Um, do we normally ask if he has any comments or questions? I did, and he didn't have I'm any. Sorry. I'm but sorry. Do you have, uh, one more, I'll go back to you again, though, just to make sure. Any more comments, questions? I would just like to uh, say thank you. And uh, I had the ability to work in the best community in the country. Uh, when you cut me, I bleed green. It's like, uh, and it's like been that way forever. And it's like uh, very blessed that way and very humbling to uh, community. It's just where you step up and help whatever's needed. So it's like uh, that simple. Thank you. Okay. Thanks again. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the board vote to approve the fire chief's uh, uh, annual review. Second. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? President on yielding the passage unanimously. Chief, congratulations on your final review. <laughs> Next time on the agenda is fiscal year 2016 goals. For uh, town manager and chief Lee, the board will establish goals for fiscal year 2016 for the town manager and police chief. What I'd like to do tonight is because we don't have a full board and I'd like to get everyone involved in this, uh, can we walk through the goals, get some initial thoughts, and then can we come back next week and finalize them? Okay. Chief, do you, have, do you have a draft just when we get to you? Do you have a draft? You don't have to give it to me right now, but I just want to make sure you have something. Okay. And you heard me say to the town manager, what we're going to do is we'll start tonight, we'll, have a little, we'll, we'll talk for a couple minutes, then we'll finish it up next week. Okay, Mr. Kamali, would you like to walk us through your proposed uh, goals? Share the hand out with the board uh, earlier tonight, presenting respectfully two goals for consideration. Uh, the first being replenishing the leadership team. Uh, as you know, we have several vacancies uh, at senior, manage, uh, senior management level, uh, namely the finance director, accountant, IT director. I've also included the senior accounting manager in, uh, in, in, under this task. Uh, I'm counting on the staff support, what support to get this done. Uh, it's very important for uh, continuity. It's important also for moving forward. The key projects that uh, are coming up, including the budget and town meeting. Okay, so that's goal number one. Yeah. Number two, this is a goal that is uh, continued from uh, the past year, and we continue to support the board, uh, as well as staff in finalizing the downtown project. Uh, we're now at the 25% cost uh, of, 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 of phase, and now we can move on to the next phase as soon as the last hour is scheduled. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sestari, over to you. Any questions on these goals? Um, oh, any other we goals gonna, you might want to think about? I thought we were going to discuss these next week. No. I want. Well, I just want to get out there and just get some initial, just some initial feedback. We will, but just favorite, since we're, the three of us are here, we can at least get a little bit of insight. Okay. So I guess I, I don't know. I don't know if it needs to be put into these goals and objectives. But on item number one specifically, um, you know, it's as you mentioned, you're, you're replenishing your leadership team, and I'd really like you to focus on uh, bringing people in 
who don't who don't require as I shouldn't say as much, but a lot of direct interaction with you. So, uh, you know, for example, us. You know, I mean, we we see you every couple of weeks, and um, you know, I know that I know that the, <laughs> I know that the chair I know that the chair has uh, much much more frequent conversations. But uh, you know, certainly, you know, it's not something where we're there every day and you know, saying how to do, what to do, and, and all of that type of stuff. We really need to start building a, uh, a management team that can come and, you know, report to you, make recommendations, and, you know, you're there for them to, to bounce things off of and be responsible in the end for the decisions that are made. Um, but we really, we really need to get some people who uh, can, can work a little bit more independently as well. So, um, you know, we really need to find true <coughs> leaders to, to handle these different departments. Experts who can tell you and recommend to you uh, what should be done in their fields of expertise. So uh, I think that that's, that's one of the things we really need to focus on this next round of hiring. Okay. Mr. Catino, just any, I mean, again, we're not finalizing yeah. tonight, but just give some initial feedback. Uh, you know, like them, don't like them, want some, yeah, you know. No, this is, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're very good goals. Um, just my, one, one minor thing is if we could uh, also work on some kind of a retention program so that, so that this so objective one doesn't, always, doesn't have to be so extensive for next year. And, and um, you know, what, uh, uh, reflecting on, on um, Mr. Sestari's uh, comments, if we can find really strong people that um, that want to be here, that will stay here, and to keep the people in the right positions here, um, and uh, find out what it's going to take to keep everybody here, so we don't have to go through this again. Okay. Just, yes, sir. Just, Back just to, to you. just to kind Thank of you. add on, uh, you know, I would like to point out that um, you know we our, our technology director that that uh, you know looked at another opportunity, took another opportunity. He was he was fantastic, and. He was here for a while, <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't anything, you know, any, any particular reason other than he had an opportunity that was very close to home. Uh, you know, we know that he would have, he would have be continued to uh, be employed by the town. Um, and, and also, the, you know, one of these positions is also a new position. So, um, you know, we're not, uh, to, to some of Mr. Catino's points, you know, certainly it would be nice for us to have some, some type of a carrot out there uh, for retention, but at the same time, uh, you know, I think that what we've run into over the last year has been, uh, you know, it's been one of those perfect storms, uh, you know, in the, in the HR world, so. And through the chair, uh, am I building a new strategic initiative for FY17? <laughs> Good luck getting that through the budget process. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay. My initial comments are um, fundamentally this is just a big execution year, right? This is just to get some things done. So we did have turnover. Uh, again, like Mr. Sistar, I'm not really troubled by it. I just think it's the way it works. Um, uh, I'm, I've actually spent more time thinking about page two here, this downtown corridor project, which I really want to see move forward this year. Um, this has been sort of, uh, you know, shambling along here, and uh, I do think it's time for us to put some energy behind this, get this project done, get this undergrounding set, right? I mean, we need to really, we need to put some focus on this. So I, I, um, I'm very pleased you put this one in. It's been on goals previously, and you've accomplished it every, each time it was on. But I do think this should be the sort of the bring it on home year for this thing. So I'd really like to see this move move materially. Um, okay, and I think what we'll do with that, Ms. Kamal, is I, I don't know that I hear any any real. I heard some suggestions about things to think about for your goals next week. So maybe we can we'll, we'll continue to reflect on this. And I think with the full board here, I'd like to make sure we get those folks feedback before we finalize it. But I, I think the, the consensus is this is probably a pretty good start. Okay, um, Chief Lee, you want to come on up and just uh, just give us a quick preview of what we're going to talk about next week on your goals? Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. I had uh, three goals. 
first being create a SEPTED uh, officer crime prevention through environmental design uh, position for the police department. Second, develop a communication plan for uh, the police department. And third, uh, continue in the next phase of the accreditation process, uh, the, the uh, actual second phase. I feel like I can go to a little depth on each one of them. Uh, the SEPTED, select the qualified officer for the position, acquire necessary training for the officer, and obtain certification. Work with town manager and planning to have SEPTED officer a part of the planning team and provide input on security design for potential projects. Uh, uh, number four would also be to offer to the community residential and commercial SEPTED officer, officer's experience and security audits and provide recommendations. Okay. Uh, we, obviously, uh, one of our biggest things is community engagement, and we kind of do that now with uh, security checks on houses when people are on vacation, but this will also uh, give the uh, community uh, another opportunity to you know, have their homes checked out have that security audit, make them feel safe. We make recommendations uh, for, for, for security. Uh, SEPTED is uh, renowned for, uh, in police work now as the, uh, as the way to go. And what it basically does is it takes away the, the, uh, the perpetrator's perceived opportunity to commit a crime. So it's, it's a great concept and it's, it's working well. And uh, I certainly think it'll be a great addition to the police department. Uh, the communication from the plan, uh, communication plan for the police department. Uh, we certainly do a lot with uh, social media and uh, doing our best, but we need to be better, we need to be more uh, transparent, and we need to engage the community more. So we're going to enhance our current communication with the community, the governing board, and partners in the community. Create a uh, essence of transparency by providing the public with performance measures and other pertinent information. Expand upon our existing social media, as well as both of the, uh, the department's website. Uh, enhance two-way communication in order to obtain feedback from the community and build upon the relationship. And uh, I'm working with my staff right now and possibly getting maybe a committee together. A lot of smart people in this town, probably in the IT, we have uh, the resources of uh, you know, EMC. So maybe we can get a little help with our website and that, you know, make people a part of this project and uh, certainly have one of the best communication plans for uh, the state. And of course, the, uh, the monumental, <laughs> monumental task of continuing the accreditation is it's tedious and it's an extremely uh, long process. We've already been through the self-evaluation phase. So now we're going to begin the process, and we have of developing developing new policies and procedures, and update uh, existing policies. Uh, we will implement the high risk policies and provide training for all members, and uh, also seek feedback from the uh, the union as well. Get the buy in from them. Uh, the, they have a committee that is uh, responsible for looking at the uh, uh, the policies as well. So. Uh, we've already begun that process. Unfortunately, uh, Lieutenant Wallace, uh, who was one of the uh, uh, um, accreditation managers, uh, yeah, will, will be leaving us. So uh, we have to uh, put someone else in that position with uh, Sergeant Porter, who's doing an outstanding job. But they've made great progress so far. Good. Thank you, Chief. Yeah. Mr. Cotillo, any initial guidance? Uh, one quick thought on the receptor. Now, would that, is that a new hire, or is that, is, is that is it, you can use it to put like the slot from um, Pat O'Brien or Lieutenant Wallace, and you're just going to look for those qualifications? No, the subtitle will so I'm looking probably to, to engage someone from the patrol division, maybe even two, that they'll, they'll, this will be above and beyond their, right. their extra oh. duties. So I'm going to, uh, you know, I try to get, engage as many uh, uh, new officers, people that have a knack for it, people that have a knack for uh, uh, working with the community and uh, offer them that I'll put it on the department possibly do uh, interviews and just see who's who's interested get them the proper training and uh, so there will be no extra cost or anything like that but we have a good history in the HBD for uh, people volunteering and stepping up for assignments like that excellent no that, that this, these, these are these are great I really appreciate it mrs. Sestari. Um, Chief, I think these look good. Um, I'd like to know, uh, or what I'd like to see on the accreditation process is um, 
maybe a little bit more specificity in terms of uh, the areas that you expect to complete by the end of the year. And I mean, you say phase two. I don't is. Are there defined phases in the accreditation process, or is it phase two because it's year two and you know that kind of thing? Well, um, there, there is uh, steps that go along with it, and uh, and that is done through through the mass uh, accreditation. Um, being a little more specific, the, the big goal is to get certain policies, and those are the high risk policies, <coughs> such as use of force, uh, pursuits, uh, things of that nature that you want to square away, and, and, and get. Uh, we, we, we do have policies on those, yep. but we want the best policies and we want the best standards so we are not open for liability and we have the, you know, the officers trained in this. So yep. those are, so, those are the, the high risk and, and a lot of times uh, you, we, we can certainly get uh, assistance through our, in, our insurance company as well as uh, been offered to review our policies and we'll certainly look into that as well. So if you could, if you could list whichever ones of those um, you, you're trying to achieve absolutely that would be great that makes it really easy for us at the end of the year to say the yep check check like check get check. them all done but we'll, uh, no i understand you but, you know, and, if you want. and i'm yeah. not you know of course yeah. i'll come back to it. this is this is one of those things you do along with policing right it's because yeah. <laughs> you're looking at over 270 to 300 different standards wow policies and yeah. then uh, of course we're going to add the rules and re as we move along uh update the rules and regulations and things of that nature orders in the in the department so there's a lot of work um, I think that the SEPTED thing's great too. Uh, I think that's really interesting. You know, just a question on that, and, and it's not about the goal itself, but um, when, when people go away on vacation, is there greater benefit to things like, you know, shades up versus shades down and, and things like that that the, that the department likes to see? Oh, absolutely. And uh, there's a whole host of things, just, just little things like lights on timers. Maybe that car uh, uh, not parked in the garage when you go away, put it out uh, in the driveway. You know, if, if you have an extra vehicle or if you're yeah. flying, there's a whole whole host of uh, great ideas. And that's uh, something that, you know, obviously we can't order everybody's house. But with the communication plan, we can certainly do a better job of engaging yeah. the community and in, in, in teaching them those tips. Great. Thanks. Okay. Ms. Coutinho, you had to follow so was it shades up or oh. shades down? Shades up with a light on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was and just have wondering. someone empty your mailbox. I'll stop them, man. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Catino. Yeah, I just had one more comment. If uh, I was wondering if, if um, the accreditation process had anything to do with it, or, uh, or if you could look into uh, non-lethal force uh, standard operating procedures. You know, if we could oh, okay. look into some of that, uh, you know, because that's something that might be able to help the officers in, you know, when it comes to some. Uh, sticky situations where uh, they don't want to absolutely have to get to hand to hand combat if necessary, but to. Well, there's, uh, I'll, I'll certainly tell you there's a lot of interest with, uh, you know, with the department, with tasers. We did have them in uh, my previous department, but we we're <laughs> researching. And uh, it's something I would look into uh, is certainly come up with a plan and maybe just present it so mm -hmm. people can get a better idea of uh, the. Uh, the, uh, the, the use of non-lethal force because it's becoming a big problem in this country. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Chief, good. Thank you. Thank you for this. Um, I, just a couple of comments. I think I like SEPTED. I don't quite know what it is. So maybe, maybe you could give a little bit of a, no, I'm not trying to create work for you, but maybe you could give the, the board a little, if there's a sheet or something, something we could read oh, about I'm it, just to let, let us know what it is. Because I think my, my, these all seem like, I trust you, these are all worthy goals, yeah. but I'd like to understand exactly what they mean and so maybe you could if you if as part of this the next meeting you could give us a little summary sheet on what septet is just a very very simple overview i think that would help the board to, to comprehend um i think the same thing on accreditation one of my comments to you was going to be do we need is there anything internal we need to do in terms of development or thinking about it maybe the accreditation process is part of that but maybe also to mrs Sestari's point could we get a little summary also of what accreditation is and what it what the benefits are for the community and why it's a worthy goal um i i trust you're working toward it i i'm conf i'm confident you're working toward it i just don't again like why does it matter to us what does it do for the community um that would be very helpful to understand um, and then the third thing is, and we, we need to think about this a little more, next year at the marathon, we're not going to have 
Chuck Wallace, Lieutenant Wallace. We're not going to have Chief Clark, who've really been the two main folks behind it. You've got one marathon in your belt now. Um, Chief Clark has also been the town's emergency, man emergency management director historically, and I don't quite know what we're going to do about that. I mean, it kind of fits in with the fire chief role, but I don't know. So I'm just, um, I don't know if it needs to be a goal, but I think I, I mean, at least want to have a conversation about how do we, do we need to make it something for you? Because quite frankly, you're the only person we know who's still going to be here at the marathon next year. Um, <laughs> 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 so we, we just we we need to all yeah. we all need to figure this out and so I, I think the public should definitely know the community should know that we have prepared for this you know Lieutenant Walsh's retirement is inevitable so this year we brought on uh, uh, Sergeant, Sergeant uh, Porter yeah. Yeah. and Sergeant Bennett who uh, mm -hmm. you know pretty much took took the lead and uh, Lieutenant Wallace kind of yeah. stayed back from afar. Yeah. Um, but we, we certainly, uh, you know, we, uh, I'm not saying we could easily replace <laughs> Lieutenant Walls with his years yeah. of knowledge, but we have been working towards that. And the same thing with, with the fire department. We've been certainly, uh, you know. Well, we just may need to think about yeah. We just may need to think about it because we're going to have a lot of transition. We're losing, a, obviously, a lot of combined experience. Yes. And I just... I, I think we may just at least want to have that conversation. And then I'll, and I'll say it again, and I'm not saying you need to add it, but just think about it. Is there something else from, an, and again, maybe accreditation covers this, and when I learn what it is, I'll understand better. But is there something about some sort of internal measures, internal development, internal, anything, anything inside the department that we, that would really, you know, help, uh, help uh, uh, advance things that yeah, we just I need mean, to think uh, about. You hit the nail on the head when it comes to accreditation. Yeah, you know, things maybe that's fall it. in place and, uh, you know, protects the town, protects the offices, okay. and protects the public. Yeah. It will certainly, uh, uh, and, and it'll be a much better explanation yeah. if I, to give you a better understanding of exactly what, yeah. it, what it encompasses. Okay, so maybe give us some detail on that in sure. September, and I think it will be good. Okay, but I think it's a good start. I, the sense I get is the board's fairly comfortable. Mr. Kamala, please. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was one of the uh, uh, task and activities. We're working uh, to, uh, with you and the planning board and being part of, uh, as, as we do now, signing off on certain projects. And uh, uh, be good. They, they'll be looking towards things like, like the Muse that's coming up. If they were involved in that, hey, what's, what's up with the lighting? You're going to have a long sidewalk. They're looking at all types of things where it doesn't give opportunities for people to commit crimes. So, mm -hmm. definitely. Okay. All right, all good. So you got a little bit of feedback, and we'll look to uh, have the broader conversation finalize them hopefully next week. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Nice to see you. Next item on the agenda is item 16, the Pratt Farm Master Plan Committee charge an action item the board will discuss a process to master plan the, master plan the Pratt Farm parcel. So again, now that we own it, um, there has been discussion for a while now on a master plan for it. Um, Mr. Kamal, I think you have some uh, concepts for the board to discuss, so why don't we pick it up? Thanks. Okay, so draft charge. Mr. Kamal, I don't know, you, you know, don't necessarily need to read the whole thing, but you want to just talk the board through the highlights of. Um, the, the vision here you're, you're going by and, and what your, your proposal is? Yeah, um, uh, briefly. Um, following, I think, the, the discussions leading to town meeting, as well as, as town meeting, the, the purpose that I've identified uh, basically uh, supports passive recreation, usage by the town scouting organizations for their activities. Uh, and other community uses, uses that are in harmony with those objectives and maintain the site uh, in as close as possible to its natural state. Uh, I think this is what we had uh, during town meeting as well as uh, during the period leading to town meeting. Uh, what the board will then be asking is for this uh, team uh, to develop a blueprint uh, for the parcel, uh, defining the most feasible and specific uses. Um, as well as also identifying uh, 
uh, as well as also identifying what, what, what I think we, we had, namely uh, whether this site could support the town's natural water, water resources program. Uh, the top of the world site, uh, I considered that under the papers. Um, we also know that uh, a town meeting we identified a very tight schedule for moving some of those uses forward, and so we're asking this committee to identify uh, an implementation plan that will implement some of these uses expeditiously. In terms of composition, uh, based on the characteristics of the site as well as uh, the stated uses, uh, I, I propose the following membership uh, a member of designee of the Board of Selectmen, member of designee of the Huffington Scouts Leadership Association, a member of representative recommended by the Upper Charles Trails Committee and approved by the Board of Selectmen with a background in natural resources planning. Uh, also, representative of the Department of Public Works appointed by the town manager and approved by the board of selectmen. And then one member at large. Uh, what the board may consider perhaps is limiting the, the member at large to uh, at least somebody who's uh, a resident within the, uh, the vicinity of mm -hmm. the track farm. Um, I've identified the, the charge uh, to uh, uh, accomplish the following make recommendations to the Board of Selectmen. This emphasizes that the Board of Selectmen have the final approval of the plan. Uh, also, for the grouping accompanied by a written statement. Oftentimes, we have uh, blueprints uh, that are uh, kept as part of our efforts without uh, any written statement. So, we're asking that there be a written statement to accompany the blueprint. Uh, that the process will be, uh, uh, we will also look, look, look at the uh, how best to, to, to receive public input, incorporate it into the plan, uh, and also educate the, <coughs> the public uh, as to the components of the plan. Uh, in terms of reference, I identified, uh, I think, the all these documents, town meeting article, and vote, uh, the agreements between the town and the Hopkins Scouts Leadership Association, the purchase and sale agreement for the parcel. Uh, we also, as part of our discussions with the association, the Scouts Association, as that they prepare an initial um, vision uh, identifying what uses and activities they would like to conduct and that should define the references. Again, this is a committee appointed by the board, reports to the board, um, and next recommendations to the board, the board of selection will be uh, closely, I think this is based on the comments we had from the board previously, uh, that you, you, you are expecting uh, the board to uh, closely monitor this process. So there will be a continuous back and forth discussion between the, uh, between, between the team as well as the board. Okay. Yeah. Mrs. Astari. Yeah, I have a question on um, the composition. The second item says a member or designee of the Hopkinton Scouts Leadership Association. And I'm not sure if there's prior precedent, but it doesn't seem appropriate that a member of a town appointed or a town committee uh, and a town appointed committee has a requirement of being a member uh, or a designee of a private group. Um, I, I agree, you know, I'm not trying to say that they shouldn't have a seat at the table, uh, but I don't think it can be a requirement in this case. That's my personal feeling. In fact, in terms of precedent, I, I believe the leg must come off. Yeah, that's the one I was trying to look for to see <laughs> how we approached it. It's a similar requirement and right. the member coming from the mm -hmm. association. I also believe one of the historic districts did have the requirement that somebody be a member of the Board of Realtors, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. So they, they is precedent in doing this. However, with regard to this specific charge, as we all know, um, the role of the association uh, was pretty substantial and significant leading to the acquisition of the, of, of the property. But most importantly, we can that to came it. along with a big restriction that set aside a portion of the site for the yeah, yeah. association. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can ask. Uh, you know, yeah. Sure. No, I hear you. I, I, I still have the same feeling. and. And I would certainly, I would certainly uh, lean heavily toward having somebody from the group uh, on there, but I don't think it should be. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I would lean heavily toward making sure that they have a voice, um, but but I don't think it should be a requirement. That's my opinion. I, I, I always like to go around before I talk, but just to interject, you know, the issue here is that they're, the HSLA has been critical of the process. They actually have an ownership interest in the property. Let's not forget that, right? They actually, they're equity owners in that land. And so they're, they're a very substantial participant, and we told them all along that we'd include them in this master planning process because their concern is that they get a scout house, right? So the, the whole there's an obligation for us to let them do a scout house, a drive, and all the other yep. stuff. And so they, so I think I think if we were to do a committee without including them, it would it would first of all be going against the context of the conversations we had with them beforehand. Second of all, again, like I said, they actually have an ownership interest in the property, so it's depriving them of their their ability to influence it through that. And, and third of all, again, I think given the, the town's proposal is to use a substantial part of this for their benefit, I think it's important they have the opportunity to vote on this one. So I hear you, but I'm not tr I think there is precedent for it, and I think that they're in a very unique position here that we need to respect. So that's sort of my, my back and forth on it. Um, assuming, assuming we're not voting on this tonight, I would like for us to just get town council's uh, opinion on it. Um, you know, I agree. You know, we have we have obligations to them, and they are a stakeholder. And as I said early on in my comments, mm -hmm. I think it makes sense for them to have a seat at the table. Um, I just I don't know that uh, that it's I don't know legal or appropriate to to have that be a requirement of the position. I'd just like for us to get town council's opinion. Okay. Uh, for the next meeting. Fun, uh, Mr. Catino. Questions, comments? No. I'm, I'm, I, I just love seeing that we're, that, that we're, we're getting ahead of this and, and, and really going to uh, uh, be able to uh, show the uh, community that um, we are uh, actively preparing for the future. Yeah. Okay. You good then? Okay. So, Mr. Kamal, my only comment would be I think, um, you know, what, what we don't actually say in here is what the end product is. Right, we don't actually say to provide, provide a, a master plan to the board of selectmen for their approval. So, could we? I know you kind of talk around it. It's kind of in, in, you know, it's kind of implied through the document, but it actually doesn't ever say they'll present a final plan to the board of selectmen for their for their approval. So, could we just could we just put a punchline in here that says? Does it say it? And I missed it. You're looking at something. Where was that? Yeah, again, I think what it really needs to be is create a, create a, a definitive plan that the Board of Selectmen can approve. <laughs> like, we want, a, we want a document we can actually sign off on. And I know, that's the, I know that's the implication, but I think I'd like to see it clearly stated. In somewhere substantial. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if we could just do that, that's a minor point. Um, and then, right, maybe that's the answer. It's just sort of. Well, the truth is, what I would do is I would put it up in front of the charge. I would say the the Pratt Farm Master Plan team will will provide is intended to provide a master plan to the board of selectmen for development of the property. And then I would say they may work with a consultant as follows. Right in achieving that goal, they may work with the consultant as follows. So the, I I think the charge should be create a master plan for approval by the board. Um, so can we make, can we just do that, Mr. Kamalo, and then can we also um, get Mr. Sestari's question answered, and then can we bring this final forward for, for a sign off next week? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, and let's do the next one now. Um, item 17 on the agenda, Hayden Road Parcels Master Plan Committee Charge and Action Item again. Although, again, I think this will be more of a discussion tonight. The board will discuss a process to master plan the town on parcels on Hayden Row. I think this should be a fundamentally different looking master plan charge. Okay, Ms. Kamal, you want to just, um, again, cover this one briefly? Yes, um, very interesting concept, uh, somewhat different from the final plan. First of all, I'm, I'm really looking for an interesting acronym for this. We're calling the, uh, the uh, Irvine to Dallow Properties Advisory Group. Man, we are, uh, we are acronym heavy tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the idea here being uh, to create 
uh, an advisory group that will develop and recommend a master plan uh, for the airline to direct property and the following compound passes zero proactive drive, 115 Hilton Road, which is EMC Park, and zero McDermott Lane. Uh, I do have a, a plan that is prepared by the land use department depicting all these passes. Um, Leading to town meeting, we we heard from the public and some other interested uh, town committees about um, perhaps focusing on the trail system, uh, active recreation, uh, common shared access to the different houses, and the school bus depot as some of the ideas that could be included uh, in this plan. And thus, the advisory group should develop and steward the planning process that involves community input, uh, provide, and this is interesting, as I was working on this, I thought this would be very interesting to report, provide a phasing management and business plan mm. for enhancing um, the quality of, of these properties. Uh, and I'm also suggesting that this plan be created um, and, 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 and that this committee or advisory group be supported by the Director of Land Use Planning and Permitting. Composition, member or designee of the Board of Selectmen, member or designee recommended by the School Committee, uh, member or designee recommended by the Upper Charles Trails Committee, uh, who is a background again in National Resource Planning, uh, and member or designee recommended by the Park and Rec Commission, given the fact that this includes EMC Park, uh, and then one member at large, preference will be given to persons from the abutting neighborhood. Um, key, re key references again in this point basically the annual town meeting article in vote, uh, the center elementary school project documentation, the 2013 open space and recreation plan, uh, the updated town master plan, uh, as well as uh, the documents that have been produced by the Upper Charles Trails Committee. Okay, uh, Mr. Catino, any questions, comments? Um, I would say we have park and parks and rec, we have uh, large upper trails, school community boards. You know, should we you know, maybe look at a real estate professional? Usually what I'm saying that is to make sure that whatever we do with the back still continues to enhance the, the local neighborhoods and everything else and that uh, I, I don't want to pigeonhole us too much into what's going to happen with that land in the future. You know, I, I want to make sure that, that in case we need something for municipal use, or we might need something <coughs> for school use, or something else that we're not going to tie ourselves up like we did um, on the Fruit Street property for, for, for many years, and then it took uh, an act of Congress to move things around to actually get the um, uses that were being used, that it was really being used for um, to uh, become the, uh, the major holder of the property. Um, I, that's just uh, something I, I thought we should uh, think about. Okay. All right, we should ponder that. And uh, Mr. Sestari? I think my, my main concern uh, is not around this uh, itself, but just around timing. Uh, with respect to the the elementary school building project, and you know, as as we know, they've already got they've already got a design for a building situated in a specific spot, and it uses most of one lot, but there's still some that's that's remaining, and I just want to make sure that once we have, uh, you know, when when the land's in our hand, and and you know. The schools build in one spot, and then there's still the remainder of that lot plus another lot. I want to make sure all the mechanics of the transference of property and things like that goes go smoothly. You know, somewhat to to Mr. Catino's point, um, so that we don't have to jump through hoops and you know, uh, you know, have any difficult conversations with with groups as we move forward. So I don't know. I don't know if that's just you know, some type of false uh, uh, apprehension that I have 
uh, or if it's something that's real. But just want us to be aware of it yeah, no, in the timing. In, in fact, um, you'll notice that you, you have specifically say that the proposed center school project is located on a portion of the uh, urban property. Mm -hmm. The idea here being as soon as that the as soon as the plot for the school is identified, pay the application is that the remainder of the person will come back to the control of the board of select one and be part of the well, process. Yeah, I mean as soon as it's identified then I mean, the remainder stays in control of the right. board of select. That's what I was going to say. We're, we're giving them a, we're giving them part, not taking part back. I, 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 I had the same, I had the same exact thought. I was biting my tongue. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. I, I agree with all those comments. I mean, I think we should um, uh, recognize that this property is is the concept here is exactly the opposite of what the Pratt Farm. Right. We're going to ruthlessly develop this in, for the town's benefit over the next few decades. And so um, uh, we need to look at ways to unify what's already in place with what may come. And then Mr. to Mr. Catino's point, make sure we're not um, impairing ourselves in any way by how we set this whole thing up. So I think that goes to the concept of the membership. Um, I like having some, obviously, having some from Parks and Rec on there is important because they own EMC. But this, this to me, so there's a couple things here. A, I think this is a little um, a kind of a larger committee in terms of thinking about this. Because, again, there is going to be thought about how you tie EMC in with the new school and how do you deal with all the stuff that may come down the road or will come down the road. Um, so I also think we should realize this group should probably take a little longer to think about this because there's more optionality with this property than there is with the Pratt Farm. I mean, there's basically three things that happen at Pratt Farm. It's more a question of where exactly you want to put them. I think with this, we may not know, to your point, we may not know for 10 years what we're going to do with part of this property, but we know we're going to do something with it, and we know we don't, whatever we do now, we don't want to shortcut our, you know, damage our ability to do it later. Yes. No, so. no, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I didn't, I didn't quite pick, pick it up that way yeah. from from Mr. Catino. But, That's what I heard, I thought. You know, just, because, just because we put trails on something right now doesn't need, mean that it needs to be zoned as conservation. Correct. Uh, you know, it could be trails now, and 12 years from now, it could be another school. Well, who knows? But I mean, I think we're not going to lock it up with a bunch of CRs. Yeah. We're not going to. We're not going to yeah. sort of um, sort of limit ourselves. We need to. We need these guys to think about the things we talked about before. The road network into this has to accommodate future growth, right? The parcel we carve out for the schools has to be thoughtfully designed. I mean, maybe we yeah. give them. They have a driveway. Maybe we don't give them a driveway. Maybe the driveway the town owns up to a certain point, right? To sort of carve the to carve the parcel out. So this is the kind of stuff we got to think about. There's a lot. There's actually this is a very, in my opinion, a, a fairly complex undertaking, partly because there is going to be so much left undesignated for the time being um, uh, until until we need it. But we know we want to use it. So. Okay. By and large, Mr. Kamal, I think by and large, I think the board's good with this. I mean, I, I like the concept. I, and I think we should think about whether we, to Mr. Catino's point, whether there's some other slots we want to work on. But maybe at a minimum, what we want to do is try to try to make clear that this is a um, uh, a long-term plan, a development-oriented plan. Right? This is not an open space property. I mean, you talked about this, the bus depot, and things like that. Um, I think we want to really really guide people to realize that this is unlike probably any other parcel we've ever bought where the goal is, has always been to keep it untouched. Even, even with, the, even with the, um, the, the, uh, the um, Fruit Street, it was that way. Um, this is really design a plan for building someday. Okay. But I'm good with this, and I, but I will vote it next week after the rest of the board has a chance to take a look at it. All right, uh, next time on the agenda, we covered item 18 earlier. Item 19 is liaison reports. Uh, Mr. Catino, any liaison I reports? Nothing, not this time. Mr. Sestari, any reports? Uh, yeah, I'm hopeful that we might have found one, if not two, uh, new volunteers for the Capital Improvements Committee. <laughs> <laughs> that's lightening your load. Okay. Um, and uh, no, that's it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kamal, a Tom Manager's report. In fact, the time of support was, was covered by the, the judge. You're the fully committee. reported. Okay. Yeah. And I also wanted to emphasize that um, Mr. Moja had asked that we speak to uh, the special town meeting, which has already happened. 
as well as the update from the fire chief hiring process. That mm -hmm. was already happening. Thank you, Mr. Mosier, for checking in from afar. <laughs> okay. Uh, item 21, future board agenda items. Mr. Sistari. Uh, nothing. Mr. Catino. No, but I, I would like to look at my list from that I've been saying earlier to make sure that some of my stuff has been covered from previous meetings. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll deal with that. Okay. Uh, Chair, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Present not voting. That passes unanimously. Good night, everyone.